That has nothing to do with this with the, the volume of your microphone. <laughs> oh, that was the volume of the microphone? <laughs> we are live. Everybody's spamming late already, as usual. We haven't even hit 5 p.m. yet, whatever. But we're here. Mm. We're live. Ready to give you guys the newest episode. How y'all feeling? Where the real eaters at? Great. That's how I'm feeling. <laughs> Shout out to CJ McCormick in the chat said that at the exact same time you said it. <laughs> no thoughts. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, pu I'm pulling this up on, on my on the. Video. I didn't even hear you. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> Nothing. Whatever. Anyways, That's as you guys see by the title of today's episode, <laughs> we are gonna do our official NBA award show. You know, we've done several st streams throughout the year where we kind of give updates. Today, you know, there's like four games left for every NBA team. It's our final picks. We're gonna go through all the official awards, all NBA, all defensive teams, everything. Let's go, man. Let's go. I think the awards, award season is weird because I feel like the hype behind them is always a little bit more than like what people think about them. Because once we get to this time, you've been thinking about it for like three, four months. And there's kind of like some, all right, he's going to get that. He's going to get that. Yeah. And so it's like, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see yeah. how, how the how the combos go. Stuff like DPOY yeah. and Rookie of the Year were decided so long ago that it's like, we're gonna brush past it, you know. Not much to say yeah. about the Victor Woman Yama versus Chet Holmgren debate at this point. Yeah. Yeah, no, I feel like 30 games into the season, first 20, 25, people were like, nah, this is a real debate. And some of them, some people were leaning heavy towards like Chet Holmgren and impact and blah blah, all this other shit. What he does on the court, plus minus, and comparing them to last year, and then everyone decided to like 40 games and all right, let's stop fucking around. This dude is generation, <laughs> quite literally. Yeah. So before we get to our NBA awards, like, you know, the main part of the show, we're going to do what we always do. We are going to start with some news stories, go through our little document. But before that, I see Kevin Galicki just came in. Our most consistent donor to the show has dropped $40. He said, what's up, boys? Missed last live because I didn't realize seven acres of trees took so long to clear. Shout out you. You got damn lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> every, every week. I think, I think last week we kind of got exposed as Kevin Galicki merchants. It's all good. <laughs> glad, glad to have you back in the in the chat, my guy. Yeah, man. Shout wow. out, Kevin. Let's get to our first news story of the day. Victor Rubinyama has a new logo with Nike and has since been unveiled. And immediately, the only thing people can say about it is, wow, this is one of the best logos I've ever fucking seen. How do y'all feel about it? <laughs> wow, this is one of the best logos I've ever seen. <laughs> 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 this is amazing. This it's is so fact, It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, in, in an upcoming TikTok time, we got to do something rating logos. This will be highly rated, I promise you. You know, this dude is ready to glaze. He has uh, all the glazing material right there on the corner of his room right now. But nah, like as soon as logo <laughs> came out, glazing material. It's all you, man. You have you have your glazing material, your munch suit. You have the whole nine in your closet. What, what is do glazing I know about it? Material? I don't know. Lubriderm? I don't know. That's you. <laughs> okay. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, as soon as this logo came out, a lot of people just started having random debates about just all players like signature logos, whether it be on shoes or just their personal brands and shit like that. And that, but this is easily one of the best and also like one of the hardest in terms of just launching in the reveal. The marketing behind this oh, is yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah, with the eclipse. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. I stared right at the eclipse, bro. <laughs> My crown eater <laughs> brain took over. Everybody was, telling, everybody was telling me, don't look at the sun. Don't look at the sun. And I was just like, <laughs> I'm, I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> Y'all some liars. <laughs> That's funny. The chat, uh, who, if you had to rank, think about this amongst all the logos out there. Obviously, the Jordan one is most famous. Kobe has a great logo. Uh, whoever else you think about, where does this Wemby logo stack up all time? Because it's, it's got to be like a top five NBA logo, right? Not top. Okay, I don't not, know. About not, top five. not top five. His, not top five. Who, his, not, not that many. I, I don't, okay. I think There's obviously Jordan is one. I mm -hmm. think Kobe's is better than than this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, is LeBron's? Off, off, I don't know if LeBron's is. I would say LeBron's is better. He has. Yeah, it's he has, just iconic. He has, he has LeBron. He has multiple. He has, he has multiple. We might have to go through it. The weird thing is like, and I guess it doesn't matter. Like if Wemby becomes good enough then people will gladly wear a little alien head on their face <laughs> or, or like or like on their shoes or or whatever. I don't see this one being as like easy to put on a jacket mm. and like style. Cause even though yeah. that it's Wemby, it's it's still like damn. 
bro, you got an alien on you. You know, like it's, yeah. like, <laughs> it's, just, it's, a, it's a little weird. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. All right, so shout out to Elena who tipped three dollars. Said if MPJ has no haters, then I am dead. Also, Cat was cleared for full contact. Yippee! <laughs> yeah, MPJ is more on. back already. That's fucking <laughs> yeah. great. Shout out to Elena, man. Clear for contact. So I'm sure he still has a ramp up period needed. You know, it was only like a week until the playing. So we'll see if he actually makes it back on time. But good, yeah. good sign. If they, if they win a playoff series, he'll play. He'll probably play in the second round then. Yeah. Uh, someone in the chat posterized just said Isaac looks like Bad Bunny if he had long hair. What a racist comment! <laughs> <laughs> I look nothing you have like Bad Bunny <laughs> right now. Posters are <laughs> posterized. Goddamn! This is not me though. <laughs> this is this not him. <laughs> uh, what else happened since we last chatted? Let me look at this doc. Oh yeah, since we last chatted, Bronny James has declared for the NBA draft. With keep in mind. He done so while also entering the transfer portal, so more than likely he can return to school if he doesn't get great feedback in the pre-draft process. But mm-hmm. interesting that he's dipped his toe in like this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, why not? You know, like yeah. if if you if you go into into the draft process and everybody says, "Oh, you can go high second, lay first, Why not? Why not come out instead of having to play on a bad USC team? And also, you could still he like he could still have the potential of whatever anybody thought about him coming into the season before he literally had cardi- like went into cardiac arrest. Like that's a massive thing that people are are forgetting. I think like they hear Bronny James declare for the draft and they're like, "Oh, he's not good enough." Guys, he's coming back from like a major heart injury. Like yeah. Yeah. Give, like give him he's going to be okay. He just needs time. And you can't really like put you can't really contextualize that for most people. Like how often do basketball players go into cardiac arrest? That's such a hard thing for people to realize like what that means and like how serious of recovery that is. That's yeah. crazy. The it's only literally. the only player that I could think of that like went through something that that serious was like Jeff Green. And that was and I mean he and he went through his stuff in like the early 2010s. And so mm-hmm. it's been it's been a, I feel like it's been a while since we've seen an NBA player go through something like that so yeah a lot of people probably don't even understand like what goes into coming back from an injury or a situation like that yeah yeah i agree i would say on court wise too in terms of just like just how top high school players decide to um decide what which college they want to go to him going to usc just wasn't smart idea point blank period because he was playing behind a junior boogie ellis guard alongside Isaiah Collier, who was top five recruit throughout the entire, throughout his entire like high school career. And so him going there was just a terrible idea in general. Of course, like LA dad, there, family, there, all that shit makes the most sense, but on court fit wise, it was never the, it was never the right choice. So like you said, Isaac, you can go ahead. Probably a lot of people are speculating that he'll go to call, go transfer to a school of his, uh, I think his dad's best friend coaches at some school called Duquesne or Duquesne or something like that. Duquesne. Pronounce it. Yeah, exactly. And so, if that's the move, that's fucking great. I think overall, if he has a chance to go into the NBA, you know what I'm saying, while your dad is still like at the peak of his powers, let him earn you more money. It's the smartest like decision mm-hmm. to be made possible. You know why not? Do you think so? Like you said he's gonna test the process and likely go back. Obviously, if there is a. Uh favorable outcome he's hearing his stock is high enough you know potentially he'll stay in it what, what what do you think that is what do you think the level like do you think he wants to try and be like a late lottery pick like does early second round do it for him probably not right dude he's being a, he's like a mid he's gonna be a mid pick a mid like lottery pick not lottery pick mid to early first round for sure just because his I dad I don't, I, don't, is crazy. I don't think there's i understand that he's lebron's son i don't I don't think there's any situation where he kind of like sniffs the lottery at this point. So we draft, he, which we draft, you know, but still. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I get that. But people, even before the season started, people were still saying like, he's, he's really smart. He's a good defender, but he still has like a lot of room to grow. And sure. so I think, I think with, with that, like, I guess like draft, you know, analysis of, of him. And then on top of his heart situation and him coming back, not putting the best film um, out there for people to see that might that you know that might uh fall back a little bit yeah. when you it talk like about him and his draft, 
Yeah. No, exactly. but when you talk about him and his draft status, like you have to keep in the back of your mind, like we have two years of fucking LeBron James, you know, and that's what comes with it. Meanwhile, you just stash Bronny and I don't know, not the G League, but just stash him on the bench or whatever, maybe the G League. If I'm a team like the Oklahoma City Thunder or any other team on the verge of contention, I don't know, like the fucking New York Knicks or something like that, tapping in immediately. Of course, Bronny James, he's like you said, Donovan has his holes and flaws overall as a prospect and in order to be successful in the nba you need to be really elite at like shooting passing you know one of those two things on the offensive end and he's neither at those two things i that none of that matters to me because i know i have like a large chance, a great chance of his dad joining my team and if i i think if you're a team on the verge of contention then do it like i would take him in rb yeah yeah it's definitely gonna be an interesting process we'll see how it plays out next storyline the one that's very funny, near and dear to our hearts, somebody we like to talk about a lot. Doc Rivers is back on his bullshit. His latest bullshit, once this again guy. pointing fingers, once again throwing people under the bus. Doc Rivers discussing the Bucks' struggles on the road this year. I've actually been sitting back and watching everything. Not just our <laughs> players, but our travel crew, everything. We don't necessarily bring professionalism, seriousness on the road. All right, hold on. Before I, you guys think about that, be quiet. Philly loving ginger. Oh, Donovan Mo just lagged out. Let's let from Mo come back in so we can react to this. Mo's crap ass Wi Fi. All right. Philly loving ginger just supplied Mo with a month of new Wi Fi. He just donated $150. He said, Been watching you guys since around episode 30 and have watched almost everything since. One of my favorite channels to watch. Wow. Not as breaded as Kevin, but still got some to donate. I'm going to go back to hiding in the back of the room. Shout out you, Philly loving ginger. I think you might be breaded as fuck. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. The spotlight is on you. You see my Wi-Fi just cut out right before he read it? That was not no mistake, bro. That was not planned. <laughs> that is God telling all you viewers something right now. <laughs> <laughs> and right before that, uh, Kevin Glicky donated another $20 earlier. He said if Mo's NBA comparison was Paul George, call Donovan and kill the NBA playoffs. <laughs> I guess they hear kryptonite. <laughs> oh, that's a crazy yeah. story. Okay. All right, Kevin. So, shout see. out the two most <laughs> breaded people in the chat. We appreciate y'all a lot. Back to this. Doc Rivers on his bullshit again. How are you feeling about this? I don't think we've ever seen equipment managers be under fire the way that the Bucks equipment <laughs> managers have this year. Because Doc said this now. Giannis said the thing earlier in the year. And I bet you they have to be back there just folding jerseys. Like, yo, what are we doing wrong? Like, are we? is it not the six-inch fold, right? Can we, can we do something different in the laundry room? I <clears throat> Doc Rivers is ridiculous. And he's going to get J.J. Reddick yelling at him again on tv just because you've only you haven't been there half a season you haven't <laughs> been there 42 games 41 games why are you blaming people like this it's crazy yeah for once, for once just be quiet his, his communication skills are just lacking i don't know he probably doesn't mean it in any material in any like rude way but he has a way of saying things like this that doesn't come off well at least especially when you read it like this and don't hear him say it Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe the people in the locker room understand what he means. But it's always funny seeing the media like this. This is doing nothing but literally burning his reputation in the NBA community under the bridge. Ooh, I just burped, bro. God damn. You sick of that was disgusting. Hope y'all hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Next tweet we got. Who is the better Nick? Jalen Brunson or Carmelo Anthony? All things considered, what they did for the franchise. Donovan, how do you feel as a resident Donovan. Nick fan? The spotlight is on you. Why are we doing this? I, it's it's extremely hard for me to to um to like come up with an answer for this, just because. And I think it's probably Jalen, but <laughs> Melo. I, I I think I think it is only because. But like it's hard because Melo came at a time, and was kind of like a revival for the Knicks, after a long long period of just straight trash basketball. And he kind of was one of the he was one of the sole superstars that like ended up coming there and kind of embraced like, okay, I'm going to come to New York. I'm going to put this thing on the on my back. We're going to try and build. It didn't really happen though. Like there was only one playoff series win in the in his whole era. Like the worst season of Knicks basketball is on is under Carmelo Anthony's watch. So like I can't give him that props um, in terms of like better than Jalen when we've already won two playoff series but is that a timing thing yeah, for like Ron Anthony and the situational thing <clears throat> like when it comes to like overall team success because well, clearly Jalen's been set up better 
Well, I, mean, I, I, no, I think Jalen said it better because he's there. He's the one doing the heavy lifting here. Like Jalen is the reason for the success rather than the team around yeah. him. Yeah. He's just and, better at holding up lackluster talent around him than Melo was, I think. And when, Mello, and when Melo got there, right, remember like Amari had just gotten there. He was hooping. And mm. the whole thing was, is Melo going to be able to like fit alongside Amari? And they were never able to, to get their – you know, get their stuff on point. Whereas Jalen was able to come in and elevate the talent that they already had with Julius Randle. He was able to add another element of scoring. And this is a team like they're probably, they still have a chance to be the two seed in the Eastern Conference. Like this is, the the Knicks this year have been as fun as anybody wanted to do. Isaac, what are you doing? What are you taking these pictures of? Putting on our story that we're live so people can come watch. Oh, okay. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was so dis- I was so so distracted. Yeah, okay, you've been violated. <laughs> I, I look up to us on my phone. I was like, "Bro, is this what is this man doing?" Okay, yeah, I, I was just but yeah, I think, us on our I story, think Brunson, man. Do let the fans know we're live, chat about the Knicks. I, th- I think I think Brunson would be better. I think Brunson is better. Wow, what makes him better to you? Like, what about his game? Just screams like, "All right, like this dude is more efficient in terms well, of like, able- finding ways to win." I think it's what Isaac said. He's able to elevate um, the talent around him. Now, granted, the talent that Mello was given wasn't always the best. And there were summers where, like, Aaron Aflalo was the big marketing and signing. Aaron Aflalo. Damn. You know, like, like that, that's where the Knicks were about. That's real years. trauma. But i don't know Br- brunson's just able to to get to wherever he he wants the vibes are just so much better and i again it's not all because of carmelo that everything over in the last 10 years like went the way that it did but he also had a chance to leave and nobody would have blamed him but he was like no nah, i'm gonna stay and take this 120 million dollars <laughs> and, and not you know really allow the franchise to go into a full full rebuild so there's also that i don't yeah. know man if i had a 35 year old Rookie and Paolo, Pablo, uh, what's his name? Pablo Brigioni on my team, too. I think these conversations. Would be I mean, but like the Knicks, listen, they traded a first round pick for Andrea Bagnani. Like, like the, the bat, bro, I was sitting through Lou Almondson <laughs> lineups, right? Right. I was, I happy, know who that is. bro, I was happy. <laughs> One of my favorite players in like 2016, 2017, Kyle O'Quinn. Oh my like, God, Kyle <laughs> O'Queen! What a throwback, Kyle, Uncle Kyle! Those were the lineups that we're that we're sitting through, and it's just so bad. Like I, bro, I was hoping that Tim Hardaway Jr. could be a decent <laughs> second option so that we could actually go somewhere. We were in the trenches; it just wasn't a a good situation for any star. LeBron could have been there, and they wouldn't have made the second round. Yeah. It just wasn't gonna happen. At least you guys got the best years of Quincy AC's career. Shout out to you guys. <laughs> Two minutes ago, the, the poll was 52% mellow. But since then, you've got it to 50-50 now. People are believing your hype. People are going towards Jalen. I think you convinced a lot of people. Wow, bro. That's crazy. Jalen was out here. That's crazy. Bro, Jalen. He's, Listen, he's we're, we're going to get to him in the All-NBA conversation very soon. So there's going to be plenty of Jalen talk to come. He's like that. What's next? Next story. Jimmy Butler says... If we end up in the plan, we end up in the plan. We've never made it easy. Why make it easy now? Are you guys <laughs> sick of Jimmy Butler and his whole like I, this? Is, I don't even know what you call this. This is mindset that is like people love it until they don't. Many people are annoyed with him, and like he's talking like he won fucking three chips, but he's just Jimmy Butler. How do y'all feel about it? Why does he want to be in the trenches so bad in terms of like where he <laughs> ranks in the NBA, bro? Your team is not bad at all. <laughs> God. <laughs> No, it is bad. Like, they're not a great team. And it's because Jimmy Butler is not able to play at peak Jimmy Butler the entire season. And we will see if he's able to turn it up and be playoff Jimmy and do all these things, right? Fulfill the legend of NBA Batman that he is and do all that (laughs) stuff. But they're not a great team. They've been in the play-in for a majority of the year. Why? Like, he's saying this now. A month ago, he was like, oh, no, it's about that time. We're going to turn it on. And then you couldn't turn it on. So now you're like, yeah, we just don't make it easy. Like, you did it. <laughs> Damn, that is true. He did say that. I forget. <laughs> Crayon Eater in the chat said, bros of Jalen Hurts of the NBA. 
Just <laughs> yapping. <laughs> not, I mean, not listen. Too not too much. Not too much. Listen. <laughs> Jimmy Butler's entire being is based on him having an eternal chip on his shoulder that motivates him at all points. If that's the type of shit he got to do and say to give himself that chip to become the player Jimmy we've seen over the past recent years, go for it, I guess. But it's hilarious given just the whole circumstances of he's given so much credit for getting the team to the finals, which is like awesome. He does awesome things. But it's it's like he's believing his own hype a little bit. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to do that every year. And people were just like tired of him playing into it too much. Yeah, no. Nah. And when you play into it too much, that's when it starts to get like corny. You're not supposed yeah. to like do the talking. You're supposed to let the people decide and let them rank you and all this other shit. You know, that's where yeah. that's. He's in this dangerous territory to where, like, yo, you have one bad playoff series and people are going to start calling you, like, the worst names. Not the worst names, but I'm just going to have crazy comparisons and your lore just, and your aura is just completely gone. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna. It's one of those things that, like, whenever somebody that gets a nickname and they start calling themselves that, like, imagine if he started being like, you know, playoff Jimmy's coming, like, just directly playing into it. Like, you're getting dangerously yeah. close to that territory. Yeah. yeah, the only person in the in NBA history who's ever been able to like get away with calling himself his own nickname consistently is fucking LeBron. And yeah, that's King James. LeBron, what are you gonna do about it, bro? <laughs> but even he's not like, you know, I'm the king. Like he doesn't really like he doesn't really like, say it like that, you know, like not so direct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except for whenever thing. he's out here celebrating, putting that's hard though, it, putting the crown on himself. Yeah, that's cool. That's a celebration. That's wrong hard. With that. You say that. You say that because it's <laughs> LeBron. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He's LeBron. I don't know why. <laughs> if I did, if I did see someone do that, like on a court, I'd be absolutely disgusted. If I was on a YMCA court or something like that, someone was just like, hmm. "Getting the ball you wanna, upside your head." You want to laugh at Gilbert Arenas real quick again, per usual? <clears throat> Good God, what did he what say? Did he say now? Back on this bullshit. He said Nikola Jokic is the worst MVP winner of the last forty years. We got to stop. Typical Gilbert Arenas Arena stuff. <laughs> this is the last time he's gonna be on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care every time. what this man has to say. I don't care. Yeah. It's just at this point, it's just funny. He's just so unserious. It's hysterical. Every day, there's a you know they do the show like four times a week or something. So there's just constant churn of takes and opinions, and they just don't got it in to do it every day without being on bullshit. It's hilarious. Every single time he's on the news, he and he goes viral. He's always slandering. And he's tearing the lines of basically he's probably gonna slur some slur somebody next time he yaps about a European player, bro. Like <laughs> how do you slur a European player? How do you slur a Lithuanian? <laughs> if anybody knows it's a He'll Gilbert. Find a he <laughs> has a slur dictionary, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Anthony Davis ruled out for tonight in what is a must win game if they'd like to get the eight seed. So that is a bit disappointing. Tough. Damn, really? Yep. Oh Last game, goodness. LeBron had flu like symptoms. I don't know what's up with LeBron. I mean, Anthony Davis tonight. Goodbye to the eight seed potentially. They're the eight seed right now. They're the nine seed. They oh, had the, the eight seed, but they lost this last game without LeBron. So they really have to win tonight to try to get the eight seed back. Not off to a great start without their best or second best player. That's something good to know. There's so many pivotal games going on right now. I fucking love what Adam Silver did each and every single day. That were like every single game is important. Two, three years ago, or three, four years ago, when the playoff. I just saw the doc. You put in a link that says Keldon Johnson biting teammate. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Keldon Johnson <laughs> bit his teammate. What is going on here? <laughs> Click it Chat. open. Chat, look at this. <laughs> Ow. Munch. Ow. <laughs> 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 and then if you pay attention right after the camera pants to uh champagne he's actually bleeding right above his eyebrow bro he took a literal chomp <laughs> off of his face <laughs> that is in that is so embarrassing and after that i'm sorry keldon you're not even like you're better than champagne but you're getting traded after that what if you do this to wemby you ruined so many bags of his bro damn that's hilarious. Jokes, what was he trying to do? Obviously, it's an accident, but like, what, I guess what was the goal? Here? And he's just like, ah, and then he's just like, like, ah, in his face or whatever after champagne. He but it's crazy because it. it just, it doesn't even look like it's an actual bite. It just looks like he bumps his teeth. His teeth yeah. are mad sharp. <laughs> if, if all it is is just a bump and now you cut your teammate, bro, go to the dentist. I'd be he's running around with like a, like a like a like an ice chisel. Yeah, <laughs> stabbing people with his teeth. I'd be so pissed, bro. Because first and foremost, 
you're on the NBA court, you play thir- over 30 minutes a game, you smell like hot ass. Secondly, bro, you're coming up to me and you're forcing your dirty ass breath all up in my face, and then you put your tongue, your teeth all in my face too? It's tough. I, I need him traded after that immediately. <laughs> that's tough, man. All right, well, that's all the stories we got today. We've got a few segments left for you guys. Up next, though, let's get straight to the NBA Awards. Let's get, do the, the first part of what this stream is titled after. Let's do the official NBA Awards, MVP, Rookie of the Year, DPOI, all that. Let, then we'll get to all NBA teams later on in the stream. But for now, let's start with... Do you want to get a little start with MVP? Do we get the MVP talk going? Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's do that. Let's do okay, it. this has obviously been the most talked about of the awards. A lot of the other ones are pr- pr- relatively chalk, right? We kind of know where they're going. Mm-hmm. MVP at this point... You know, most of the year, or start of the year, it was Joel Embiid's award to lose. Then he got hurt, and it was like Luka, uh, Nikola Jokic versus Shea Gildas Alexander. Pretty clear two horse race. Shea's missed some games, slowed down, and Luka Doncic has motherfucking rocketed up to the top of the conversation. It's really him versus Jokic now. Where do you two stand right now at the end of the season? Now, listen, if you're paying attention to me, watching these streams, Crown Eaters podcast, I was a first. I was on the on the uh, Joel Embiid train, like ninety percent NBA fans. Normal, cool. As the season has gone, on, season has gone on and on and on. Of course, shifted back into Jokic's hands, and now seeing how hot the Dallas Mavericks are, and seeing the Mavericks overall have overall success catch up to Luka Doncic's individual success. I gave this man Luka my MVP vote. Really? Okay. He, there's a couple games left in the NBA season. Right now, they're playing the Charlotte Hornets. If they win, they're one game away from winning 50 games. That his stat line and him being entirely dominant for the entirety of the season and his team finally catching up, which doesn't matter, even though his team hasn't been dominant for the entirety season, they're here now. Him scoring 73, putting up ridiculous 40, 50 point games, 30 putting up 30 points before halftime on multiple occasions, bro. I have to give him my MVP MVP vote now. His, his team success has finally caught up, and that was the main thing stopping him from being in this conversation and actually winning it. Fair. I see comments says, Mo is a slave to recency bias. What do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding <laughs> me? Let's learn some more words. Right. Right. <laughs> brother. <laughs> Let's read some dictionaries, right? Some <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I get it. I get it. Don, I'll, I'll let you go next, Donovan. Where do you stand on this? I assume um, when I, you're on the I, other side. Yeah, I still have Jokic. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I. Okay. So the the team success thing, that's cool, right? Like, like yes, the Mavericks have gotten to a point where they are respectable, and they're probably they're going to finish the season with 50 wins. The Nuggets are probably going to have the one seed, and they're probably going to be like six, like six games better, five or six games better than than the Mavericks. And Jokic has done nothing. I feel like in this conversation, Jokic mm-hmm. is kind of getting the treatment that we give Tatum, where like T- Tatum at the beginning of the year, it's like, oh yeah, he's just going to come out here, score twenty five, play some good defense, right? The team's going to win, ho hum. And for Jokic, mm-hmm. it's kind of gotten to that point where. He's gonna come, he's gonna show up, he's gonna score 28, get 12 rebounds, get nine assists, be super efficient, no mistakes. He's gonna hit Aaron Gordon on lobs. He's he, we know what the actions are. Like, who who cares? We'll judge Denver in the playoffs. What Jokic is doing on a night in, night out basis, being clearly the best player in the league on one of the best teams in the Western Conference, which is the as competitive as it's ever been. I think he deserves that nod over Luca, who has I made an amazing push. I don't. I don't want to discount him, but Jokic has been doing this from na- from day one. Yeah, this is such a hard conversation to have right now because Luca, on most years, fully deserves to be the NBA MVP. Nikola Jokic, on most years, fully deserves to be the NBA MVP. They both have such legitimate cases, and Luca fans are being so annoying about the people that don't want to vote for them. They're treating it like it's this vendetta against him. Like, what does he have to do to earn it? If he's not going to earn it now, does he got to average 40? The point isn't he's doing anything wrong. It's that Nikola Jokic is, like Donovan said, these are the two best players in the NBA this year. Only one can win it. Neither one are doing anything wrong. It's just two extremely qualified people. 
And I think it comes down to obviously Luca has bigger stats, right? He's averaging more points by significant margin, 34 on worse efficiency, but pretty good for that volume. As he's at 62% true shooting, which is ridiculous. Jokic is at 65 true shooting at 26 points per game. Obviously still a great scorer. People that talk about the wins and then the, the Luka fans are like, it's not about who can win the most games, it's who's most valuable. Being valuable means you win. You know, like that's part of it. That's always going to be part of it. People are like, it used to be best player, best team. It's not that rigid, but that's one of the many criteria. There's individual production, you know, how good your supporting cast is and how much you win. It's one of three levers or however many levers you put in it that matters. So I think the rush to say that like the winning thing is lazy and that Luka's being robbed because he doesn't have as many wins is dumb. There's a reason that Jokic's team wins and it's because of him, because he's so valuable. Yeah. It's it's so hard because both have real claims, like you guys have said. You're I'm going right. to go Nicole Jokic. That's fair. You said there's a reason why Nicole Jokic's team wins a lot and it's because of him. But at the same time too, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's a reason why Luka Doncic's team has been winning a lot and it's because of the team behind him finally catching up to speed mm -hmm. you know it has nothing to do with luka a uh, previous couple podcasts ago we were talking about luka Doncic in his mvp case and all this other stuff and you were you made it like a great point in which like you're talking about his team and how you really cannot go against just the differential the difference in wins you know and now that i finally see that creeping up and if they can get to me to that 50 game mark 49 not good enough i think right now they're beating the shit out of the charlotte hornets and luca has like seven threes in the seventh in the crazy. Third quarter is like they're only like six minutes into the third quarter something fucking ridiculous you know mm -hmm. so i see that i see the team success finally creeping in and then the just his i don't know just the, he has so many mvp moments throughout this season obviously i'm gonna say more than nicole Jokic because Jokic on most occasions is going to be on cruise control and he just glides into MVP moments, but like scoring 73, having hitting like all these crazy wonky shots. We saw just a couple nights ago against uh, the Houston Rockets. He hit like a underhand three pointer or was it a long two? One of those two insanely difficult. He just, I don't know. I see his case and I see the team success finally rising behind him. And I think that check, he check, he finally is able to check off the last box which has nothing to do with him. It just it just pertains to the Kyrie's, Dante yeah. Exum's, Gaffords and shit, shit like that of the world. Here's the thing. People treat Luka like he's still playing with bums. Like this is the 2018 mm. Mavericks. And they treat Denver Nuggets like they're a super team like they're the Celtics. That's crazy. I don't, we, people overrate the quality of Nikola Jokic's cast because he makes them look so good. This team, people say like if, the, if uh, Luka was on the Mavericks, they'd be a bottom feeder. So would the fucking Nuggets. They have three good bench players, none of which are creators. You got Reggie Jackson, Christian Brown, and Watson. None of those players are particularly productive off the bench. They play well fitting around Nicole Jokic and Jamal Murray, but it's not good depth there. Jamal Murray, fantastic second option. Great in his role. We know he's a top tier duo with Jokic, but that's with Jokic. If... He was devoid of Jokic. He is fine. He is good, not amazing. Kyrie's just as good, if not better, in his role. So that's even. And obviously, sure. MPJ, KCP, Aaron Gordon, all these guys are talked about as some of the best role players in the league. That's because they have Nikola Jokic to make them look so great. They fit so great around Jokic that he's able to elevate them and make them look so good. Not because they're so individually talented. So, you know, I don't think... Luka has had more turbulence to deal with. A lot of injuries early in the season, we know. The team sucked before the trades, so he obviously had that to deal with, which is holding back his record. It's not like Jokic is carrying great players around him either. He's also doing a lot to elevate them. If you look at their on-off numbers, so true. the Nuggets are 24 points per 100 possessions better with him on the court. That is a huge carry job by Nicole Jokic, the same as it was last year. 24 points better when you're on the court is fucking ridiculous. The Mavs are 9.4 better with Luka. Big part of that is because Kyrie plays a lot of the second units and Lucas on the bench, and he can carry them more. He can really hold the second unit. Jokic doesn't have somebody that can hold the second unit like that. They live and die by Nicole Jokic production. Yeah, no, nah, that's so true, and I and I agree with you. The thing about the Denver Nuggets, and I would say I've been I feel like I've been feeling like this for a couple years now. Luca's been like the, one of the most cursed superstars in the entire NBA, cursed because of course, like we don't we all know the whole thing. 
He's so good to the point where the Dallas Mavericks never had a real chance to get a second star or another lottery pick of his level. Mm -hmm. So the best lottery pick that they've had is fucking the rookie right now, Derek Lively. But looking past that, in terms of just like the fit, the Dallas Mavericks has never, and in my mind, I still think that they could still do a better job of just like getting more defenders, more cutters, and more people who has similar play styles to the supporting cast that Nicole Jokic has right now, you know? Although, like, MP, the MPJs of the world and KCPs and whoever else you want to throw in that conversation, they're not world changers. But compared to the Maxi Klebas, the Tim Hardaway Juniors, the Reggie Bullocks type shit that Lucas had to deal with, they're game You just teams. named, like, you skipped the four best teammates he has to do that, though. You know, like, if I skipped them, it was, like, the PJ Watsons, the Christian Browns. Like, it's, it's different, you know? No, I know, but if you literally if you it's different but it's really not compare the five best role players that lucas had compared to the five best youth role players that nicole Jokic just had it's night and day difference we're not there's no conversation there at all Kyrie, Kyrie, brunson <laughs> casey porzingis like it is as part of him didn't work obviously but like he's yeah. had gafford now live okay, but we're doing historically look at it this year Kyrie, gafford lively hardaway exum pj washington Derek jones yes. that is a good supporting cast that is not a, something a we chunk just... of those guys didn't get there though until you know February. Yeah, it's two not of those the entirety guys. Of the season. Yeah, I, so, I agree. But you know, this, and and to, we can like turn page on this conversation too. This is just me giving kudos to Luca and be like, all right, your team finally deserves it. Maybe kudos to his team in that front office as well. Your team finally deserves it. But in terms of like you know, to picking Jokic over him, it's not a bad. There's no wrong answer when it comes to this yeah. in my mind. I understand. Okay, okay. Now. It makes sense. Real, real, real quick, real quick. Two two things. One, just to point out like what Luca's doing. It's they're about to hit the uh the fourth quarter in Dallas, Charlotte. Luca has 37, 8, and 6 right now. It's ridiculous, bro. It's, 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 it's crazy. He had five threes in the first quarter. So that's that's one. Two, I feel like on a lot of these awards, um, something like a uh an argument point that I've heard a lot is Oh, well, this guy has time to get this award later, right? Where it's mm. like, where, or like, it's, it's, it's kind of like pre voter fatigue, where it's like, no, like he's going, he's going to win in, in the, in the future years. So we should, we should give this person like their flowers now. Like we should make sure that whenever we look back 10 years from now, this person has X award. And I don't think that that's the right way to look at it because that's stupid, it's, yeah. Because it's about who, like in the moment right now, who is doing the thing to earn the award. And if you are voting on awards based on, oh no, like I know Luca's, I know Luca's really, really good. And so in 10 years, I want to make sure that he has his two MVPs so we don't get a Kobe Shaq situation. That's not, that's not right. And so like, while I also agree that like Steve Nash should have two MVPs, he still has them. And they still like it still should mean like a little bit some of something, and it is still like a snapshot of that era. And I think whenever we look at this era, we are a hundred percent going to look back and be like, no, Jokic was the best player from this point to this point. And if you are just giving out MVP so that he doesn't win them all, I mean, we shouldn't be doing that. It's the same thing yeah. that happened with Jordan. That shouldn't have happened. It's the same thing that happened with LeBron. That shouldn't have happened. And I, I understand you don't want to give it to the same person every year. But if that person is legitimately the best player in, in the world, leading his team to the best record in their conference, doing all that stuff, they should they should get that award, in my opinion. Yeah. And even outside of all this, we all, if everything is so close and so close to equal, like we we're saying, end of the day, none of us rank Luka Doncic above Nicole Jokic this year. We all look at this, and it's like we treat MVP like it has to be mostly statistical profile. But we all know Nicole Jokic is better. There's a reason we all call him the best player in the world. So even mm -hmm. if you think the supporting cast, the winning, all this stuff, all us being equal, you don't think Nicole Jokic is worse than Luka because Luka scores eight more points per game. So why does that give him a better MVP credit? Why is points per game way more in MVP than it does in ranking best players? It shouldn't. We all know that Nicole Jokic is better at elevating those around him. He just takes less shots. We know that he sets everybody up incredibly well, the best decision maker in the league. He's a better defender, impacts the team defensively more, isn't a liability off ball as a defender or offensive player. All these holes that he does not have at all, that matters in this conversation too. No, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I would, when it comes to defense, obviously, 
there was a narrative surrounding Nikola Jokic about him and people were talking about, oh, it looks like he runs with sandals on whenever he's getting back on the defensive and on the court and shit like that or whatever. Yeah, and he since then, yeah, it was really nasty. And since then, like, due to, like, you know, Coach Malone's strategy and just how he picks and chooses how to, like, you know, utilize Nikola Jokic on that in terms of on the court in terms of just, like, how he takes up space and shit like that, it's genius. And, and that doesn't mean anything unless Nikola Jokic continues to give effort and genuinely, like, bust his ass on that in which he does. And there's still, even I said it on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, like, Nikola Jokic, I mean, Luka Doncic is, like, a cone to me, and he has been for the entirety of the season pretty much, although he has made, like, real strides since the turn of the, since the turn of the year. But, you know, with all said, with all, that being said, in terms of just like the singular season and seeing how much he's elevated alongside his team, finally, the conversation has never been about all like, you know, how many points per game does this dude average? Like, it's cool. He could average fucking 40. It doesn't really fucking matter. I'm, not, I'm lying. It really does. It does matter. It that would matter. Whatever. 40 is ridiculous. But yeah, 40 is <laughs> that fucking would matter crazy. matter a lot. <laughs> I caught myself immediately. <laughs> but just seeing how he's doing this shit, bro, and how special of a season this is, I'd lean, I'd lean his way, finally. Yeah. And listen, yo, Luca has improved as a defender. It's true. He's better, especially on ball in certain play types. Mavs fans have taken that and made it sound like he's a good defender now because they just don't know how to be measured. Everything has to be hyperbolic. He's still not an impactful, positive defender. I think Jokic is just barely. Like, he's above average and doesn't hurt you. Luka overall is not a plus defender. We don't have to pretend he is because there's good points of possession plays where he does well against post-ups whenever he's guarding fucking Dylan Brooks. Of course he does well against that. He's huge. He does not affect the game positively defensively on a play-in, play-out basis defensively. Yeah. So if if Luka Doncic won this MVP award, would this be a travesty to you guys? No, no, no not at all. I was just about to use. I, I was about to make a joke and use that same word and, and use, use travesty. No, it, it wouldn't. It would be shocking. It would be shocking, but it wouldn't be like, oh, we have to rethink the MVP award. It, it, it'll be. It'll be fine. But yeah. I, I just yeah. don't think he would. He just wouldn't get my vote. But I can. I can 100 see the argument for, uh, for Luca. I. It, mm. I just wouldn't go there. Yeah, yeah, I, don't, I, I wouldn't be mad at all. If he wins it, I'd honestly be happy because I like Luka a lot too. He's also one of my favorite players. I wouldn't be mad at all. Again, I'd be surprised. I, I don't foresee it happening for all the reasons we've outlined, but it would be an MVP caliber year that I wouldn't be mad about, you know, being in the history books. Mm, okay. Rookie of the year. Let's spend exactly 35 seconds talking about rookie of the year. Who is your pick? W- Never mind. E- don't say any M- words. I'm writing Wemby down and we're not going to talk about it. Sweet. He's been my rookie of the year since preseason. <laughs> <laughs> Confirmation bias wins. Wemby has been the best rookie this year, as we all expected. Shout out, Chet. Your first 20 games was incredible. You've been also a fantastic rookie. Wemby's different. When's the last time we've seen a rookie as good as Wemby? Uh, this good of a rookie season? People compare it to Tim Duncan's rookie year a lot, who's better because he, like, he was older, so he was like legit a star immediately. What about Ben Simmons? Uh... I have to go back. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Ben, you guys I, think about I, that. I forget, I forget what, what Ben Simmons. Let me read out some of the what you guys think about Byron that. Mitchell. Yeah. NV1271 donates $5. He said, with Shea's MVP case fizzling out at the end of the season, I have a feeling he may now be Jason Tatum of the West. His team doesn't have so much talent in the coming years. I feel like he'll always finish fourth. I agree, but I don't think it's a necessarily a bad thing. He's just not as good as these top three guys. Jason Tatum of the West is damning. <laughs> Shout out to Del Sol, who tipped $3. Let me forget, we got these last four before I forget about him. Yeah. Dell sold tip three dollars. He said, "Main reason Jokic shouldn't win MVP. He likes his horses too much. He ain't serious about ball. This man's living in November." <laughs> oh my god! Oh, well, that's talking point twenty though. Uh, shout out to Noah for tipping ten dollars. He said, "Been listening to your guys' audio on YouTube Music since episode thirty. This is the first time I've ever watched you guys live. Thanks for all the content. YouTube Music Hope is crazy. You enjoy. Appreciate you." <laughs> uh, shout out to Dell Soul for tipping another three dollars. Uh, shout out to Ferris twenty two for tipping ten dollars. He said, again, been listening to the pod since the finals last year and haven't missed one since. We appreciate all y'all. Donovan, what were you saying about Ben Simmons? Ben Simmons, rookie year. Um, 16 points a game, 8 assists, 8 rebounds, 1.7 steals, 0.9 blocks per game. He played mm-hmm. He played. Eight, he played 81 games. That's tough. Which is crazy. <laughs> that's, that's, that's insane. Ben Simmons' first two years 
that he actually played. He played 81 and 79 games. And then we never How saw How the mighty have fallen. Wow. One of the I don't games started. He played 15 games this year. Damn. Yeah, also Zion Williamson's rookie year. He hit 22 points per game on 58% from the field. Oh, I, for, I forget about Zion. I don't know why that, his rookie year. Like, that, 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 didn't that, that first 20 games of Zion was, was, that was special. No, the next 60 games the following year when he came back, 27 points per game on 61% from the field. That's when I was looking at a god amongst men. That was crazy. Oh, my All right, goodness. we move on to the next award. Defensive player of the year. Is this one chalk for you guys? Is anybody not going to pick yeah. Rudy Gobert? It's Rudy. Give it to that Frenchman. He deserves it. Yeah. Did anybody consider anybody else here? Anybody get make a close push towards the end of the year? The only person I could think that honestly made it interesting would be Wemby. Um, but his the, the team just isn't good enough to um, on defense for me to make a, a legitimate argument against Rudy Gobert. But um, but yeah, Wemby Wemby would be the guy. Yeah. Mm. Hey, listen, preseason picks, everyone wanted Anthony Davis to be that guy. The Lakers went the other way and became an offensive oriented team. They just have way too bad of a defense. Even though he yeah. might be the most talented defender alive, you, you're not going to win the award unless you have a top five defense. That's just kind of the reality of what it is. It's kind of like best defender on best defense, low key. Yeah, and I'm and I'm okay with that. If that's if that's DPOY, that's fine. Anthony Davis, listen, I'll see you on all defense team. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. He might not win throughout his career. Yeah, neither did Tim Duncan. Is what it is. It sucks, but right. still going to be going down as one of the best defenders of all time. Gobert's season is being so underrated, I think. It's like everybody decided the first month of the season he's DPOY, but then people just kind of like, like, oh, well, there's the Gobert praise for the year, and then we haven't really talked about it. And But I don't think we we'll realize that we saw him win DPOYs whenever Utah Jazz's entire organizational approach was Rudy got us on defense, surrounded with offensive players, they got us on that end, and it worked, obviously. Great teams. But it became really hard in the playoff setting, as we've seen, because Rudy can't guard five people. D. Mitch was a cone. Bogdan was, uh, Boyan was a cone. Joe Ingles, all these people were just getting blown by. Well, this is the first year we've seen Rudy Gobert actually be playing next to other talented defenders, and they immediately had the best defense by a fucking mile all season. Like, it shows you how amazing he is and what can actually be done when his team builds around him properly and actually gives him pieces to help him on that end. Utterly dominant. Wow. I'm, I'm glad there's guys like you in the world. Who will give Rudy? Go, <laughs> who will give Rudy his praise? Because I'm one. Of those You're not people. giving any of. Them. <laughs> yeah, I'm one. I'm one of those other people. Where, uh, I, was in the first <laughs> one, I was like, yeah, Rudy got it. Good for him. He's back. And now I was like, all right, we're good. Dude, he's so good. <laughs> when he has competent defenders next to him, you cannot score at the rim against this guy. He suffocates people. Like for all the talk about Wemby's defense this year and how great he is, Rudy is still on another level. He is ridiculous. He's more mobile than people think. He is one of the best defenders of all time and gets no respect for it because he's boring and corny or whatever. I'm, I'm glad he's going to get another one this year. Yeah, nah, Rudy deserves it, bro. He, he deserves that. He, he should have been an all-star in my opinion, too. Now, of course, Rudy Gobert, all-star game? Ew, who the hell wants to see that? Nobody. <laughs> I get it. I understand it, too. What the fuck he's going to do? Just catch lobs and that's it, bro. But the impact that he has on that end, like... 70 60 percent of it does just doesn't show up on the stat on the stat line on this at all and his rim deterrence and how he just takes up and eats up space and how he just affects almost every single possession is ridiculous if you look at the opposing team's shot diet whenever they go up against someone like rudy gobert no one wants to really attack the rim people are just shooting hella mid-range shots bro that is how their defense is catered and that's only because of rudy not only of course like having Jaden mcdaniels and anthony edwards be absolute dogs on an end too helps a lot but rudy runs away with this award in my mind it's a clean sweep shout out rudy next award clutch player of the year who'd you guys go with for this <sighs> man Okay. okay, before you go, real question. Is this award just like who scored the most clutch no one, points? Yeah, no one really cares. <laughs> All right. you know, DeMar DeRozan you know. has the best clutch numbers in the year this year per Google, per looking at who just who has scored most he points in the clutch year, in most games. He? No, it was in the inaugural year, it was De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron Fox. Oh, yeah. True. I went with DeMar DeRozan. His numbers so far in the clutch this year, he's played in the league high 40 clutch games. 23, or oh, no, 38. Fuck. Yeah, 38 have been played by DeMar DeRozan, 40 for the total Bulls. DeRozan missed two of those. They're 23-15 and 15 in those clutch games. 
and DeMar DeRozan leads the league in clutch score points. Listen, I'm going to be yeah. real honest with you. Unless LeBron wins it, I don't care. I don't care. This means <laughs> nothing to me. <laughs> this is definitely an award nobody cares about right now. They definitely haven't built in <laughs> people caring about this award. Yeah, I will say, though, so I'm looking at it right now. DeMar is not the favorite to win this award. Really? <gasps> Who is? Steph Curry. Oh, yeah, I've seen yeah. He's, he's up there. He, he's second in clutch point scored. They're neck and neck. Yeah, so Steph Curry is kind of he's kind of running away with it. Minus one fifty for uh, for favorite. Demar is at plus one ten. So for for what it's Both worth, spamming Baloney is spamming uh, SGA in the chat right now. Good for Baloney. People are spamming so much this stream. It's crazy. <laughs> I've muted people. <laughs> oh, they mute two more people. Who who you who you guys gonna pick? Uh, I'll take, I'll take probably. Me. Yeah, cool. This is just the vibes award. I give it to Steph. I gotta let him go away with something to be proud of at the end of the season. All right, Steph Curry, you get something to your name. Mo thinks you're the clutch player of the year. Donovan thinks Ooh. DeMar DeRozan. Again, this is just a spreadsheet ass award. I don't really have much interest in it. It's just sure. It doesn't. It doesn't lend itself to to discourse at all. It's literally just who scored the most points in the clutch. It's whatever. Yeah. Also, Six man of the year. Quick, real quick, before we get to that, there's almost a thousand people in here, and we're not even at 500 likes. Ooh. Oh, we we got to We got to change that. Before the six man of the year. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Crayon Eater of the Year. Who is that? That is Kevin Galicki. <laughs> Elena, bro. Could it be Gabe in the chat? Gabe McCain. He he literally comments every yeah, single yeah. time. I remember these names. Here. I can't see you. I see you all. Crayon sure Eater of the Year. Go ahead and throw yourselves in the ballot. I yep. get I can't choose. <laughs> Elena and Del Soul tip every single stream too. Appreciate y'all. Day ones. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta mod them so we have more people in the chat. I see Elena tip three, oh, one dollar. So can I, can y'all mod me? Because the chat's been spam. We, we should mod her. Uh, shout, let me read some more, read some more donations while we're at it. Uh, shout out to William Yates for tipping five dollars. Appreciate you. Uh, Zach Baratel tip three dollars. Yeah. Bob tip one dollar. Yeah. And Dale Soul tip three dollars. Appreciate all y'all. Yeah. Crown eaters of the year. Congratulations <laughs> to you. <laughs> Six man of the year. Who are you guys going with? Listen, there's a, there's a tall man with dreads up in Minnesota that's mm. getting my vote. Now oh, Reed is getting my vote. Hmm. I love Reed that. Is, 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 that's my sixth man of the year. That's not a bad pick at all. Nas Reed is snapping. Osborne. Who? My bad. <laughs> so who's your vote, Donovan? <laughs> Nas Reed. I mean, Mo. I mean, Mo. Who's your vote? <laughs> <laughs> so... I like Nas Reed a lot. There's no real right answer to this shit at all. But I was leaning towards Malik Monk. But may, now that I think about it, maybe Nas Reed is the correct answer. Someone else who deserves to be in these talks is no one really gives a damn. No one's going to give him the credit. But as Bogdan Bogdanovich on the Atlanta Hawks has been, he's had the best year of his career right now. You know, and it sucks to have it in a year where this is just like another bleh, mid, very forgettable season for the Hawks. But it's between Malik and uh, Nas Reed. So I'm going to flip the coin a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and give it to Nas Reed. Nice. Yeah, I wanted to go Nas Reed. It, Malik is so clearly going to win it. He, this is his award. This is right in stone. I will put as much money as I possibly can down on it. This is Malik Monk's award. I kind of want to go Nas Reed because once Cat got hurt, we all kind of thought, exactly. like, ah, oh, shit, there goes Minnesota's chances of being the one seed. They're kind of cooked. Nas Reed stepped into that role and did exactly the same thing Carlton Towns did. They didn't lose a step. They're still tied for the one seed, fighting for it with the Nuggets down to the last day of the season. And that's because Nas Reed, when playing power forward, is damn near the same player as Cat. Obviously, at different strengths and weaknesses. Impact-wise, he can carry that load. And that is so impeccably valuable from your sixth man to be able to do that for a high-level team that I'm cool with the award going to him. Or you guys want to vote that way? But Malik Monk is going to win it. Bro, yeah. Nas Reed is shooting... For, like basically forty two percent from three this year, he's ridiculous. Right. I love him right. on on five attempts. Like the fact and for everything that you just said, the fact that Cat went down and they can still operate kind of business as usual because they have Nas and we we were talking about before the season how Nas Reed is one of the most underrated uh, you know centers in the league just because he's behind a, a Cat and Gobert. He's on a team that already has two bigs. They can. Those guys are so interchangeable, and he is fantastic. So I, yeah, I think I think Nas Reed got it. But yeah, Ma Malik has has been awesome too, though. Yeah, he's Malik Monk plays such a 
insanely important role for this team coming off the bench. Like, this team like so desperately needs what he brings to them as both a scorer and a playmaker off the bench to the point where he plays more minutes than their starters on a lot of nights. He's at 26 minutes yeah. per game, 44% from the field, 35% from three on difficult shot diet, which is actually down a little bit from what it was early in the season, but 15 points and five assists. It's like, if you watch any Kings game, he's their third most important offensive player on most nights. Yeah, yeah. and because, like, you, Kev, Kevin Herter has Kavon? gone kaput for, yeah, Kevon Herter, who has gone kaput. You should switch his name back to Kevin because he don't deserve that Kavon tag anymore. Bro. <laughs> he lost way his cred. Fucking long. <laughs> yeah, he lost his street cred, bro. He hasn't done shit. He hasn't done <laughs> shit. Up, 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 until you, up until you say Kevin today, I, we were on some stream, and I, and I said Kavon. I was thinking about it again today, and I was like, oh, I actually forgot that his name is Kevin. And it's not <laughs> Kevon Herter. He earned that name back in 2021, bro. It's 2024, Kevin. I need to see more action from you. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like there's Goal a lot is. of times where the offense goes kaput, and – Malik Monk makes a whole lot of something out of nothing when guys like Harrison Barnes just come out flat naturally. Keegan Murray, second year, can come out flat sometimes. And Kevin Herter, who didn't have a great season at all, is out for and is out with the injury for the rest of the season, comes out with nothing. So Malik Monk is just as important to his team as Nas Reed. And he was my initial pick, but the vibes are great with Nas Reed, man. I love his I, game. I love Nas Reed. I'm, elite. I'm cool with it. Um, yeah. yeah, this is the most improved player. Is this one Tyrese Maxey by landslide, or did you guys go with one of the other people? It's it's Tyrese. It's, I don't think we need to talk about it, to be honest. Me neither. Col- yeah. uh, Kobe White had a had a claim for a little while. He had he a moment. Slowed down. He, he he had a moment middle of the year. He slowed down. Tyrese Maxey didn't. He did his thing. Well, Tyrese Maxey's stats are a lot lower, obviously now because he had to go through hell for like over half the season without Joel Embiid, him playing in like a Jalen Brunson role, just having every defensive man thrown at him. Not his game. His efficiency suffered because of it. Still don't blame him too much. He's still averaging 25 points per game. A clear jump. And listen, Jalen Johnson didn't make the game's requirements. Kobe White Pain. slowed down. Uh, who else was in this running? I forget. We could Low-key J-Dub could be in the conversation. I don't know. But it's going to be Maxi. He was an all-star. Yeah, I agree. I think it's Maxi. Some people in the chat are sp- uh, spamming Kaminga in this thing, too. Which is like... Be serious. Yeah. Be serious. <laughs> Damn. You <laughs> said be serious. You didn't have a chance. Like Kaminga could be on the ballot. I agree. He's 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 great with the opportunities he's gotten. He's averaging twenty points a game on good efficiency. He cannot play defense. He is a poor defender, and it's not that he isn't deserving of being on the ballot at all. But Tyrese Maxey became an all star. <laughs> like it's just yeah. like you don't think he's more improved than Tyrese Maxey is. Like you cannot be serious and tell me that. I have one more name for you, Alfred Singoon. Did he meet the games play requirements? Nope, he did not. He played sixty three games. Tragic. Yeah, tough. I mean. Sure, he could be in the running. I don't know if I would have picked him over Tyrese Maxey, but Sagoon's yeah. all another guy who just need the opportunity. I just need the platform, and he he ran with it. <laughs> yeah, so like I agree. Him. Yeah, Tyrese Maxey okay. helped unlock several possibilities and opportunities on and off the court, and strategically, he just changed the entire landscape of that organization with how he's evolved in this game. So I agree, it's Tyrese. Yeah. But early in the season, after the James Harden trade, whenever they got just role players back for him. We were like, oh my God, is Joel Embiid going to be out of there in a few years? Like, how are they going to replace that star production? Like, he needs a running mate. And Tyrese Maxey was like, I got y'all. I'll just be an all-star now. Like, yeah, I just decided, and it's fine. And it has been fine. Like, they're good. I'm your guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's not just like he's points per game went up. Like, it's a new role that's materially more difficult being that second option, and he's thriving it. I agree. Tyrese Maxey, congratulations. Clean sweep. Is this the first clean sweep? Oh, uh, no, there's, there, there's a few. Uh, DPOI, notably. Oh, yeah, true. Oh, and rookie of the year, obviously. Oh, Coach yeah. of the year. One of the more interesting ones. A lot of good coaching, you know, performances this mm-hmm. year. Where y'all leaning? So we, we talked about this, I feel like, a couple months ago. And I was I was arguing for Chris Finch. You guys swayed me. Mark Dagnall is now my Coach of the Year. Um, I think, yeah, with the Thunder, like looking at everything and looking what the Thunder have, have been able to to accomplish, he's 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 the best coach right now. And he's it, like him along with everybody on that team from the players to the coaches has really elevated their game this year. And so I think for in terms of like expectations from where we thought the Thunder were going to be at the beginning of the year to, pro- you know, still fighting for the one seed. Yeah. Mark Mark's going to be the guy. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Doc Rivers, but I definitely appreciate the <laughs> Dagnall pick. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, my yeah. gosh, bro. I should throw <laughs> my fucking sandal at your fucking head, dude. Don't ever say that again. <laughs> Me, the crown eaters are all insulted by you, bro. Be serious, god damn it. <laughs> no, I agree. I'm going Mark. Whoa, my doc just freaked out. But yeah, I agree. I'm going Mark Dagnall. They're fourth in offense for the season, sixth in defense. That is utterly ridiculous to do with a team that was materially basically exactly the same as they were last year, plus Chet. And the ability to use a rookie like Chet and put him in the exact spot offensively and defensively to completely maximize your team and make them take not just a leap to being a good playoff team, but a leap to being top three team in your conference all year without really any moments of failure outside of the injuries as of late. It's ridiculous. It's been just the uniqueness of how they play offense the soundness of how they play defense like a lot of teams are just as good because of talent and because of whatever reason like the celtics are incredible because they have the top best six we've seen in recent years this team is so good in large part because of coaching yeah i can agree to that for sure um there's been there would have been so many coaches who would be hesitant to play someone like chet hungerman at the five full time and just be like fuck it, this is what you're gonna do and you're gonna thrive at it and kill it and we believe in this philosophy of spacing so much because of who our star player is. That's very fair. Um, but also, like, I feel like someone like Chris Finch, who has a lot of roster limitations in terms of stylistically and how he can play, you know, I, I'd rather – I'd lean towards him for coach of the year. Are you going but, Chris Finch? Yeah, I'm going Chris Finch. I'm going Chris Oh, Finch. okay. Yeah, yeah, I think he's really but, a bear maid. Ooh, you think he's like a Quinn Snyder type? <laughs> Be- Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> no, he's good. He's good up there too. But I think Mark has done more with his coaching decisions to elevate his talent than Chris Finch has. Not to say Chris Finch has done bad by any means. He can be on the ballot. But offensively, they're very simplistic. They are they're doing what they can with that lineup. Offense isn't what makes their name. They're carried by their defense, which I think is entirely Rudy Gobert made. I think that is much more on him than it is on anything brilliant that Chris Finch is doing. I don't think it's brilliant to have J.D. McDaniels and, and Nah and uh, Edwards at the point of attack and Rudy yeah. Gobert behind him. It's great team building if you want to give them like executive of the year in hindsight to their GM. Cool, but I think what Mark Dagnall does to maximize guys like Lou Dort, Josh Giddy, all these guys in the court and not make you have any type of spacing liability, that's a lot more impressive to me. Nah, yeah, that's fair, and I can uh, I can agree with that. And the, the most the more impressive thing to me is just how consistent they've been. And mm-hmm. with how just young this team is and being able to galvanize these guys at such a young age, too. Like, they're just as old as a lot of college teams out there. It's crazy. And to see him, like, trot to, like, probably 55 or whatever wins to end the season, it's fucking stupid. It just doesn't make any sense. But I agree with you. Yeah. I'm still leaning Chris French, though. I have to be the oddball. <laughs> Listen, man, we all need a contrarian. Yeah. All right, next thing we got is our all-NBA teams which I think personally is the most exciting part of this whole episode. Deciding essentially the 15 best players in the league this year. This is where I put a lot more thought and pressure on myself to get right. But before we get to that, Donovan, we're bringing back a segment we started last week. Donovan's debate of the day. What do you have for us today? What are we going to argue about? All right, now listen. Now, we can either have a basketball-related one or a non-basketball-related one. I'm going to let you two decide. Where are you leaning, Mo? Now, Non-basketball now, related. Non-basketball related? So be it. All right. Now, we've had this conversation before, but I wanted to bring it before the people. I think that Cinnamon Toast Crunch is an overrated cereal. And I think that it is not in the top three. Ooh, Kick him out. Serious. Kick him out. Kick him out of the stream. <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of people see sugar at 8 o'clock in the morning, and they get excited, but it is not that good. And I can name three cereals off the top of my head that I would rather eat on a daily basis over Crown Cinnamon Eaters. Toast Crunch. Donovan, Ratio this man Donovan, to hell. Donovan, I am glad you said this. That shit sucks. It is so overrated. Oh, my God. Ratio, <laughs> Crown Eaters, it's time to fucking rejoice. Reap from behind me, bro. Spam <laughs> these folks with L's. Oh Frosted my Flakes, goodness. better. Honey Nut Cheerios, better. If you want a sugary ass cereal, Lucky Charms Captain might be Crunch? better. Listen, Captain Crunch with the berries, better. I've seen, listen, I go in, into the grocery store. They sell the little cinnamon toast crunch powder. That's ridiculous. 
Y'all, that's, y'all that, should, that, should, that should never be sold you by know, itself. Because that cereal has range. It, it, it is should never be sold by No, itself. it has no range. It's, it's not versatile at all. Anything. It's the mm-hmm. most versatile cereal in history. You never see no goddamn Fruity Pebbles as goddamn cream, bro. You never see no goddamn Fruity Pebbles as fucking pancake mix, bro. Cinnamon Crunch has what? that type of versatility, first of all, bro. First of all, first of all, you have yeah, seen that. Fruity, Fruity Pebbles is kind of like that. There are Fruity Pebbles flavored stuff, and there's Fruity Pebbles, like, protein powder, all, all types of That's Fruity fake. Pebbles flavors. That's fake. Fake. Stop it. Stop it. Let me also yeah. listen. Under underrated cereal. I'll be Y'all back. You're going to make me look up cereal stats, bro. Get the fuck Dude, out of here. Dude, Cinnamon Toast Crunch is so fucking unversatile. Frosted Flakes, you can put fruit in it. Cheerios, fruit in it. Fucking Rice Krispies can become Rice Krispies treats, which are awesome. That's versatility right there. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is when you want a sugar rush and a sugar rush only. It's straight cinnamon. There's no versatility. Nothing you can add to it. Nothing interesting. Just cinnamon. It is good, but not great. I might sometimes, and listen, if we're just going off of sugar, right? If I'm feeling crazy, might have to go with Cookie Crisp over Cinnamon Toast Crunch sometimes. Oh, you're okay, no, no, now you're, now you're ridiculous. Now you're ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. Cookie no. Crisp is kind of crazy. But I will say, my in terms of like underrated though, listen, this right here is one of go. my favorite things. <laughs> Get that badger off of my screen. Right Who is that? This Who is that dude? Is fire. Y'all he fire. He looks know about going to Chris. Hey, hold Golden the fuck on. Crazy. Hold the fuck on. We just got a three hundred dollar donation. Oh. What? <laughs> Archie oh just God. donated three hundred dollars. He said, hey guys, been loving all the videos. Still making my 12 hour shift so much easier. Keep up the quality. You guys are my GOAT podcast. Hey, you're my fucking GOAT listener, Archie. Shout out you. Yo, Shout out you. Shout out Kevin Galicki. Appreciate you. You're, Our fans you're, are rich. Archie, you are on Crayon Eater of the wow. Year ballot. Oh my goodness, bro. <laughs> Thank you. Del Soul just tipped $40. Shout out Del Soul. Said, I'm a huge fan in every stream I donate. But after this slanderous talk about Cinnamon Toast Crunch, I am now a full time Kenny Beachum podcast listener. <laughs> Fuck it. Listen, I'm going to put this. in my trade request waivers <laughs> go right, try this now. right now. <laughs> go try this next week. Come back next week. Tell me your thoughts. I like this. I like this cereal a lot. You're giving a free promo too? What are you doing, Donovan? Let's be serious here. If we, listen, it will be the last company to hit you up. Hit my line. Hit no. My line. Oh, my God, bro. This is Dude, disgusting. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is a B plus A minus cereal. The best cereals, listen, when you reach the age of 19 or so, you realize that the sugary shit isn't the best cereals. The best ones are the ones that are a little bit sugary, but a little more basic, a little more repeatable to eat on a daily basis. Frosted Flakes, I love Frosted Mini Wheats, uh, Honey Nut Cheerios, all that stuff that's like the flavor is like wheat or whatever with sugar. That's so much better than the ones that are hyper sugary. 100%. You guys are disgusting and you guys are both wrong and you guys have been spanned with L's and... I hope that you get a bad batch of cereal next time you eat it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Honestly, I'm I have such an issue with the fact that American breakfast is just sugar. This is my biggest old man take as I'm getting older. Is like, why is the only thing we eat for breakfast fucking candy? It's all candy. I used to love Pop Tarts until I thought about it. I'm like, it's fucking candy for breakfast. It's bread and candy. It's ridiculous. Like, why are we the country that just has to eat fistfuls of sugar in the morning? It's setting us up, bro. I ain't gonna lie. They had me. I was a plate cleaner until I was like 15, 14 years old. I'm telling telling you, bro, belly hanging over the waist type shit. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm having a 1910s take. <laughs> Bring back porridge. <laughs> porridge is crazy. Bring back porridge. It's disgusting. Steel cut oats. <laughs> I know about cream of wheat, man. <laughs> cream of wheat goes crazy. Like, so, so why are y'all talking about cereal anyways? Why not? Why wouldn't we be? <laughs> Yeah, bro. Oh my goodness. We talk about basketball all the time, nonstop. That's all we think about. <laughs> Except when it comes to Syria. Donovan. We we'll worry about this. I need you to shut up and talk about dribble, bro. Talk about the fucking ball. <laughs> shut, up and dribble. shut up and podcast. Yeah. <laughs> shut up and podcast. The second you don't talk about basketball, you sour my opinion on you. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "You know ball. You don't know a damn thing about food." <laughs> 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 Shout out to uh, Anon for tipping ten dollars. He said we clearly need a TikTok time serial tier list now. We gotta re- we'll return to this conversation probably next stream. We'll, this is gonna be well. something we return we to well. for sure. <laughs> All right, let's move on back to the award talk. Let's get back to the main topic of the conversation. And bring our viewers back in. <laughs> All NBA teams. We got first, second, and third teams. 
Obviously, we know we got to get our top 15 players in the league this year. How do you guys want to do this? You guys want to start with first? Yeah, let's just, let's, let's get first out the way because I do feel like that's kind of unanimous at this point. Okay, well, I don't think the fifth spot is. Okay, four really? spots are unanimous. I'll go ahead and say it. We have Shea, Luka, Jokic, and Giannis as four locks in everybody's first team, right? Yes. Yep. The fifth spot is clearly up for grabs. I've seen people say AD. I've seen people say Kawhi. I've seen people say so-and-so and so-and-so. I went Jason Tatum. Same. Same. Give him his respect, Jason Tatum. Okay. A lot of people are quick to dismiss Jason Tatum this year. People are bored of the Celtics. They're annoyed by how stacked they are and how great they are and how they clearly don't need as much from their, each individual player because they're so good. It makes Tatum not in MVP conversations and so on. But some people will hear that and they think that makes Tatum like bad or not impressive. But he's the best player on the best team for a reason. He's the best playmaker on the team. The best wing defender. Oh, no, I don't know that. Jalen Brown's had a good defensive season. But, you know, he's the engine that makes that team go and makes them so good. He clearly deserves first team, I think. I think any desire to put Kawhi over him is fucking silly. I agree. Um, yeah. Ka- Kawhi has had a great season. Mm-hmm. But in terms of like the consistency, Jason Tatum has done it from fucking start. Yeah. Till finish, you know what I'm saying. Right now, Ka- Kawhi, he did have like he was okay, decent to start the year, and he really ramped it up mid season. And now we're going through this normal Kawhi Leonard lull that we usually see. And there's injury questions. Hasn't been playing like that, and also wasn't all hasn't been performing as all that. And Jason Tatum does that on a consistent basis. I am, or I at least should be, known as a I don't want to say a Jason Tatum hater, but in my mind, Jason Tatum, truther, you know, he's going to go in, give you 27, five and six or whatever, and go home. But what he does is appreciated. One of the best in the league at, at his position and the consistency in which he does what he does without altering the team in any people, certain way. Other people than are like spamming Ant. Especially. People are spamming Ant and like... <sighs> Somebody said Aura Man. You know that's why you want me to put Ant here is because he's Aura Man. There's no way in fuck you think that Anthony Edwards is better than Jason Tatum this year. I get it. We don't like the Celtics. They're not interesting. They're unfair. It is Jason Tatum. We don't got to forget. Like, come on. I love Anthony Edwards so much. But he's in, he's been in a nasty shooting slump over the last, like, two weeks, too, which completely tanked his efficiency. I can't go in at all. Yeah, he didn't have a first-team case for me. People are saying Brunson. I respect the Brunson pick for sure. If you want to put Brunson there, no issue with it. Again, we all know Jason Tatum's better. What Brunson's done in his role is massively impressive. There's a reason Jason Tatum's team is so good, and he's the biggest part. Yeah, I agree. When it comes to those ant conversations, like he's obviously going to make an all NBA team, but like let's kind of slow the fuck down. You know, I understand his likability and all that it has improved drastically compared to his season season prior to this in terms of efficiency decision making especially defense and all that but he just hasn't eclipsed a lot of the, a lot of top players in the NBA who you guys not YouTube but in the general consensus put him over yeah Bucky Don what's your second team because I imagine Brunson is on it so let's get transition to actual Brunson talk we'll start with Jalen Brunson uh, okay and then we will go with Anthony Edwards we okay we'll go with Kawhi Leonard we will okay. go with Kevin Durant mm. and we will go with Anthony Davis Oh, Ooh. LeBron not on your second team. Interesting. Okay. Wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. If Anthony Davis has had – Anthony Davis has had the best season of his career, and he has been everything that everybody has always wanted him to be, a dominant two-way player, right? Obviously, he's not this, like, offensive creator in the same way that, like, Jokic or Embiid is, but he's still giving you – high 20s in terms of points per game and is one of what the five four or five best defenders in the league like he is he's gone crazy this entire year and although he's out tonight he has been extremely healthy and reliable for the lakers this year and i this is like i just want to give him as much praise as possible because i have listen i more than a lot of people have slandered him whenever he has not been doing any, everything that I've asked or wanted to see from him. Now that he's doing it, no, but you have to give him his props. He's been amazing. Yeah. Uh, he actually thinks he's been better than LeBron this year. If you ranked the top 10 players in the league, nobody's ranking Anthony D- Edwards over LeBron James. But is and that maybe, maybe part of his team success, which I understand, 
I think he's been very good. He's been the rock that holds him down. But he hasn't been like a Luka or a Jokic that's like carrying the team. The on-off numbers are ridiculous. Like he's the engine that makes the offense go. He is a big part of it. He's the best player in the team. But they're a team that's winning with defense, not offense. The best defensive player is Rudy Gobert. He's the biggest impact driver this season and has done his part to make them, you know, the 12th to 13th best offense instead of really low. But I don't think he's as much a part of winning that makes the team success have to put him second team. So, but, okay, so when you say, like, when you think about where you would put, like, your 10 best players this year, with with LeBron, how much of that is in a playoff series, like, I think I'd probably still want LeBron over Anthony Edwards rather than Ant has been this, you know, this great player. Obviously, like, he started off super hot, cooled off a little bit, but I do mm-hmm. think that the the two-way stuff from Anthony Edwards has been really, really interesting to see this year. And that I think that, on top of the team success, is, is why I propelled him ahead of LeBron. Yeah, I get that, mm-hmm. but... I think when you actually look, I'm about to pull up their stats right now. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, even just looking at the basic statistical profile, mm-hmm. I don't see how Anthony Edwards is any more impressive than LeBron. You know, he's averaging 0.5 points more, less rebounds, less assists. The advanced stats, block plus minus, warp, all that shit, has LeBron higher. He's simply way more efficient. 59% effective field goal to Anthony Edwards, 52%. He's averaging 0.1 more steals. And I agree, he's been the better defender this year. His perimeter defensive playmaking is incredible. And that's the biggest area where LeBron's been coasting. I still don't think it makes up for everything else. Who's been funnier this season? Anthony Edwards or LeBron James? It might be LeBron James. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yeah, that's, that's kind of hard. That's kind of hard. LeBron does have that. Well, he was talking to Jeannie Buss and some other white lady. He was, you remember that uh, meme? He was like, first off, happy International Women's Month or some shit like that. People, someone yeah, read his looks. He is, he, he's <laughs> been the funniest. That instantly vaulted into my top five LeBron clips ever. <laughs> yeah, first of all, first of all, happy International Women's Day. <laughs> he said that with so much confidence. And he's just like, oh. Oh, bro. Oh, so I'm seeing in the chat. I thought people were trolling, but Giannis got hurt. I'm looking that up right now. No. Yeah, I thought people was, somebody was like, Giannis tore his Achilles. So I, assume, I assume they were trolling. I imagine it's not that, but right, he is hurt. I got to pull up on oh. stream right now. Let's take oh, a second no. look at this real quick. Okay, that's a non-contact. If Giannis tore his Achilles, I'm going to fucking do damage to something. Let's see this no, slow down. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, well, that doesn't look good. I'll say that out first. I'll, I'll be the one to say it. That does not look promising. Don't love to see that. Don't love to see that limp either, which looks very Achilles-like. Oh, Fuck. I'm hoping it's like a calf strain or something because he held his calf. Yeah. And, and, uh, damn. Hopefully calf that's a calf. and Achilles are real close to each other, so there's no way to real tell. But it can't be good, especially at fucking four days before the playing starts, before the playoffs come around. And he's just not coming back into the lineup, this too. This oh, this sucks. sucks. This sucks. Oh, man. This has a lot of implications. Fuck. Uh, there's been a lot of talk on the timeline about how this might be Giannis's 2014 LeBron season where all the wrong moves are made and the team quickly falls apart and you didn't expect it and he might be on the way out. If this is the case and he's out for a playoff run, this will, I think, quickly facilitate the dismantlement of the Bucks as we know it. Oh, my goodness. I, it's either I'm, that. I'm in shock. I'm in shock. Wow. I, I, I would say a lot of people didn't even believe in the Bucks or had, a lot of people have gotten to the point to where they don't believe in the Bucks, and maybe this is, I don't want to say good for Bucks fans, but like, the disappointment is going to arrive to your doorstep either way. But, man, yo, <laughs> seeing disappointment arrive to your doorstep, like, this is just gut-wrenching, bro. Hopefully it's not anything serious. Yeah, we'll see. It but... does look like a calf strain to me, though. Ah, who was to say? Yeah. Hopefully it's a calf strain. It's just like a two-week injury, but we'll see. Sonic, he's spamming. Yeah. Please unban Will Bauer. I don't know who that is. I don't know how to see who's banned. Shout out Will yeah. Bauer. He's going to have to talk today without t- typing. <laughs> That is hilarious, bro. Will, stop being dense and go ahead and make another account and subscribe to us. <laughs> That's cool. Whenever I time people out, I time out for 30 minutes. So Will's not, I didn't send him to die, whoever this is. He's, he can be back chatting in 30 minutes. <laughs> Free Will! <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mo, who is on your second team? Ah, all right, so starting off this one hot, of course, Jalen Brunson, unanimously, one of, in my opinion, he's been one of the 10 best yeah. players in the NBA this season. It's insane to say that out loud, 
because I just never foresaw this coming at all. I didn't know he had this type of ceiling. And seeing how he's been able to shoulder the load on a consistent basis with a team that's not ultra talented offensively and just continue to be a fresh breath of air and like, you know, security blanket for the New York Knicks whenever shit goes, when she, whenever shit hits the ceiling offensively. Hella impressive. They haven't had that for years, decades. And for him to do that, just out of the blue, nowhere is so impressive. Second on my list, Steph Curry. That is my dude. Looking back at it, he probably should be third team, but there's not a real heavy argument against him being second team. He's been great, hasn't been phenomenal, hasn't been the so 43, 42 Steph Curry. Okay, okay. Curry, okay. Yeah, he hasn't he hasn't been the sharpshooter that we, you know, know him to be, but still he's been great. Next is LeBron, have him second team. Seeing his jump shot of evolution is just so amazing to me. Still, he's shooting 41% from three this year. I Ridiculous. think it's higher than he has a higher three point percentage than Steph Curry. Obviously, you know, shot difficulty difficulty is a lot different, but still impressive. Then I got KD and then AD. Okay, yeah, I am not mad at uh, putting Curry there. It came down to Curry versus Edwards for me. I oh, no, not Curry versus Edwards. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong list. Curry versus LeBron for me because I wasn't putting Brunson down. I wasn't putting Kawhi, LeBron, Davis, any of them. So. I Curry's seemingly taking a step back. Maybe it's just cold shooting. We'll see. Again, I've said before, his team around him is putting him in a very tough situation to succeed. It's very taxing on him, the style of play he has to play. And he's just not 2021 20, Curry anymore. He can't put the team on his back and score 31 points a game like that. I think that's very that much is clear to me. He's taking that level of step back. And I accounted for that a little bit, I think. Maybe that's me overreacting to the poor team around him. But I'm trying to like <clears throat> hold my biases accountable because I'm always so slow to react on Curry and I don't want to put him down. I just thought it, w- it would be objective to put him 13. Yeah. Efficiency Absolutely. wise, it's fair. Efficiency wise, excluding like one season of his or two seasons, this is like the third worst year efficiency wise of his entire fucking life in the NBA. And I would say that has more so, of course, like he just can't get baskets going in, but also. Doubling down on that, this team is just not working. Kevon, Kevin Looney, or Kevon Looney, has been starting alongside, uh, what's his name, Draymond Green for a chunk of the season. And what's his name? Steve Kerr was so late to make that adjustment and finally play like a traditional NBA lineup or whatever. So, yeah, I think this the regression is noticeable with Steph a little bit. But at the same time, it looks even worse than it actually is because – of the offensive five power that they have on their team, which is little to none. The five power is Steph in Kaminga sure. dunks. <laughs> Giannis has a left calf strain, strain team says. <sighs> Woo! Dr. Mo is in the building. I've had a plenty of those in my entire lifetime. Five <laughs> times that I played basketball. You've had I'm calf strains? Kidding. No, I'm just kidding. I'm so long. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> you're, <laughs> <talking horses. laughs> you're, you're like, every time Kenny's in a podcast, he talks about his shoulder injuries. That's you with calf no. strains? <laughs> no, whenever I have Charlie horses, bro, it only happens when I'm stretching in the morning, like after I wake up and I stretch my toes. Worst p- feeling fucking ever, bro. God damn. Just start shaking. Just, ah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, I'll give my third team now. Uh, this one was the hardest by far. Of everything we're listening today, every award we're deciding, the last spot for third team All NBA gave me the most stress. It was so hard for me to decide. I'll, I'll give the easy ones first. First off, Devin Booker. First one, very easy. I think Devin Booker has become extremely underrated. He's a lock. And nice. Curry is a lock. Nice. Edwards, a lock. Those three nice. are super easy. Next spot was a lock for me, but I know it won't be for y'all, everybody else. Rudy Gobert. Same. Wow. Look at you. I'm glad. But not a lock, I understand. This last spot came down to either Jalen Brown, DeMontis Sabonis, Zion mm. Williamson or Tyrese Halliburton. My wow. my heart wanted to be like, fuck it, Zion's been so good lately. I gotta throw him in there. I didn't do that because for the totality of the season, his on-off numbers are really bad. He just like d- a majority of the season, he was just the guy. While the last 30 games, he's been fantastic again. Didn't enough way off enough in totality to put him above some of these other guys. My brain wanted to go Jalen Brown 
because I thought maybe the Celtics deserve a second guy. He's been defending the best he's ever had, playing his role really well. You know, he was all NBA last year, didn't get worse. But I was like, come on, I mean, to be fucking serious, Jalen Brown's never made the team better. He's on the court. His on-off numbers are always terrible. He is not a guy that really elevates the team around him like some of these other guys, like Sabonis, like whoever else. It was between Sabonis and Tyrese Halliburton. And you know goddamn well I went Tyrese Halliburton. Wow. <laughs> to the surprise of absolutely fucking no one, I went Tyrese Halliburton. <laughs> uh, for the air time, you know goddamn well Tyrese Halliburton. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he had a terrible shooting slump to close the second half of the season. Uh, for sure. Do you guys realize that Tyrese, after a shooting slump, averaged 21 points per game on 60% true shooting? That's still incredible for a totality of a season while leading the league in assists, while having a team that has been top three in offense the entire season, strictly because of him being the offensive engine he is, even when the shot isn't falling. The level that he carries his team offensively, despite the shooting slump in the second half of the season, is incredible. And this award isn't just for the last 15 games when that shooting slump has happened, it's for the totality of the season. So the beginning, when he was a god amongst men, having a 67% true shooting, still counts. And overall, you compare him to someone like a Jalen Brown, who has similar level of scoring, isn't the league leader in assists by any means. You know, it's a big difference there in the playmaking brings for other people. It was down to him and Sabonis. And I think that he does more for his team offensively than Sabonis does. And neither one of them are good defenders by any means. But I think Sabonis' defense, <laughs> which is, you know, okay at best for a center, is more damaging than Tyrese Halliburton, who is a fucking cone by all means. Like, Tyrese is a cone Bro, cone. We see Josh Giddy hit this man with like three in and out, and Tyrese almost sat on his ass. That is yeah. damning, bro. Tyrese is not a good defender, but it's a lot easier, a lot less impactful to have a poor defensive pr player at the point guard than it is at the center. It's, it's so hard to build a good team around a poor defensive center that that was the deciding factor for me, is that I think on, in terms of two bad defenders, one matters a lot more than the other. No. I can't be mad at it. I didn't consider Tyrese, but you should can't be mad at not not <laughs> he was an honorable mention for me personally. I guess we can roll into my third team. So third team all NBA, Devin Booker has to be locked. Still the best shooting guard in the entire NBA. Right next to that, Anthony Edwards. Okay. Depending on who you talk about, could be the second, could be the third, sometimes could be the first best shooting guard in the NBA defense. Incredible. Of course, whatever. Kawhi Leonard finally makes an appearance on my list. He was <sighs> great. <sighs> throughout the entirety of the season, but it took time for him to rough shit up. And now, obviously, like, you know, things have been rough for him. But regardless of the fact, when he was on the court, amazing. Rudy Gobert, I have to go ahead and give him that love. Okay. If you put him on the Sacramento Kings, the Sacramento Kings end up being a better team, bro. Sub out, sub out, obviously, DeMontis Sabonis. They're well, ending they, up a much better team. I don't, they I don't, I don't they know. They like that offensively. And defensively, they've all, they're have they obviously worse on that end. So if they excel on one end of the floor, similar to what they did last year on offense, then they are getting more Ws. They're cooking. People time. in the chat are like, for fuck's sake, Gobert over Sabonis. Sabonis has carried them to like the 11th best offense. Like he's done so much to carry them. And be like his offense is not clearly isn't as valuable as Gobert's defense, whose team is winning because they're the best defense in the league by far. I Okay. I think I would want to see Gobert on the Kings with a healthy and like good version of Herter because he's been suboptimal this year. And um and so if you had that going with Malik Monk, I'm very I'm very curious to see how that would look, like how the offense would look. And if it I just because I think that if you have Gobert there, it puts a little bit well not a little bit, it puts more pressure on De'Aaron to be a creator and, and kind of initiate more. And I'm not sure if you put that much more pressure on him if they would thrive, if they would be like a better team offensively. Obviously, the defense would would get better, and so that that's where you're trying to make it up. But I'm I think that the offense would take kind of a substantial hit if that happened. Yeah. So that so that that's why I'm like eh, I I don't really know. It is yeah, it I don't like I, I don't sure. I don't hate the like obviously like the logic of that I don't hate it, but I, I'm not sure. That's that's very, that's an interesting thing though. Um, Who's your fifth player? Man? Love to Rudy Gobert. Fifth player is Bam out of bio. Oh okay. Bam Shout out of bio. Yeah, like I wanted to, I wanted to put Sabonis in this list, but at the end of the day, I'm like, me personally, I'd rather have someone like Bam Adebayo on my team, and I think Bam Adebayo is just genuinely a better center player, whatever way you want to frame it. The defense is there. He's not as he's not that much worse of a playmaker compared to Sabonis. 
Um, he's made leaps and strides as a legit jump shooter. You know, he can take mid-range shots. You can't necessarily sag off like you can at times. DeMontis Sabonis, and he's like an all-in game. <laughs> Hold on, sorry. Oh, read this comment. TD3 has the Trey Young agenda, but for Sabonis. Sad to see my fourth favorite NBA podcast. Hilarious, by the way. Go down Ooh. like first take path just for interactions. My guy. Do you think Sacramento Kings fans are getting interactions like that? You think we're trying to egg on <laughs> Kings fans for rage interactions? You think they have motion like that? Like, you say Sabonis' name and you get a million views? We don't give a fuck about Sabonis. It is nothing for interactions. Like, what are you talking about? I care about Sabonis. He's a very good player to me. No, he's good. He's but. good. But when you discredit him or when you, whenever you criticize him, it is not for clicks. There's no clicks to yeah. come by criticizing Sabonis. Yeah. I agree. Like, in terms of <laughs> fun and watchability, like, for sure, I'd rather watch DeMontis Sabonis play 10 times out of 10 compared to someone like Rudy Gobert. But if I just want to win and have, like, real-life impact and shit like that on the game, I'm picking Rudy Gobert, and it's, like, a no-brainer. Yeah. And I, I respect Sabonis being here. Like I said, it was down to him and Tyrese Halliburton. I don't hate him being third team, but I don't think it's a travesty to leave him off either. Yeah, I agree. It's not a travesty. Not even real. Wait, wait, what do you think, Donovan? Yeah, you've been quiet. You've been, you've been thinking over there. To tell us I'm about just, your third team. I'm, I'm just, I'm just here to, to, to discuss. Um, <laughs> Booker, Curry, LeBron, first okay. three. Um, kind, those were locks for me. The fourth one, um, Tyrese Halliburton. Um, okay. He makes it as well. The same, same reason that Isaac was saying, like the stuff that he was doing in the beginning of the year, right? It's the same kind of argument, but in reverse, as like. Well, okay, maybe not like that drastic, but the uh, the same idea of like Luca having this crazy second half and like really vaulting himself up to like the MVP stuff, it's like that, but for Tyrese Halliburton. And when you are Nikola Jokic for half the season, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get props for that, right? Like when you're when you're averaging high twenties, leading the league in assists, being one of the most efficient people ever, like yeah, you're you're gonna get that nod. So Halliburton gets it. Last player for me, um, very very tough. I'm going Zion Williamson. Woo! Oh, that's so nice. shocking. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm going. I'm going Zion. I, I love it. Kind of reverse of, of Halliburton. Kind, kind of slow start. For I think a majority of people think that his start was slower than what it actually was because of the in season tournament. And yeah. listen, that was a terrible moment, and it was awful. And that I think that that was a legitimate inflection point. But for a little bit after that, people kind of just thought like, oh, he's. He's been as bad as you saw him in the in the tournament final, in the final four, whatever. He's been that bad the entire start of the season. Not the case, right? Or he's been that bad for the next two months after that. Also, not the case. He's been he's been really, really good. And with the fact that like Brandon Ingram has has gotten hurt, Zion has stepped up over the last, you know, 20, 30 games, he's been going crazy. And you have to give him credit for making the adjustments, stepping up and taking kind of the leaps that, that we've seen. Statistically, this is not the best we've seen Zion, but the flashes and where we thought Zion would be are still kind of there. Like the athleticism, which I thought was kind of gone because he was, you know, kind of out of shape, played himself into shape. We're seeing that again. We're seeing the dominance going downhill, you know, scoring it in the paint. We're seeing his, his playmaking and, uh, and uh, offensive and offense initiating skills elevate. I think he's been very good the entire year. And so that is why he gets the nod for our NBA. I like that. Because listen, when he was bad, bad, it was for Giannis' standards, but he was still a good mm -hmm. player. So if you have, what, call it 50 games of just being good, not great, and then the last 30 games of being exceptional, that make that, you know, that's a solid A minus B plus season overall for his standards. Mm -hmm. I'm totally okay with the pick. Like I guess I didn't go with it because I think there's some other guys that. Just had a better case on better teams who were they played a bigger part in that success, you know. Like I want to go bear over him, who like he's the reason that the one seed because the you know they're a defensively built team, like I said. And yeah. I feel like he's more important to his team success than Zion has been because the team is so evenly dispersed talent wise. But in terms of just like who's the best players, I fully respect it. Yeah, sure. it, for, for for me, it came down the last three that it came down to was Zion, uh, Zion Gobert, Jalen Brown. Yeah. Wow. So it was hard to leave Jalen Brown off. I want to give him credit. It was it just really, tough. It really, it really was. It really was. He deserves someone it. I'm not mad at all if he gets it again. Yeah, I agree with you guys also. But someone who also deserves respect and was a part of my honorable mentions of this is Paul George. 
this he's no one's talking about it, but this is one of the most efficient careers or years of his career in general, shooting 41% from there on like eight attempts, and has easily been the most consistent player eh. throughout the entire season for the Clippers. Without him, I don't know where the fuck this team would be. Still solid defender doing his thing on that end and still consistently gives that offensive punch that they need whenever Kawhi is out or whatever is happening with Kawhi. So I think he has a real case as well. He's had a pretty bad second half of the year. Clippers fans have hated him. He's been very inconsistent shooting-wise the second half of the year. I think since, like, let me me check. I'm I'm pulling up the stats right now. Yeah, he's been, he's fallen off quite a bit from when they were incredible. And, like, it's one of those things where if you look at his, like, box score, you're like, oh, he's so good. But then you listen to any Clippers fan, and they're like, "Oh my God, he needs to be in jail." Like, really? I follow Clippers Twitter a lot, and they've just been irate at him for some reason. Oh now he has God. had looking out. He's had a great past ten games, so clearly he's recovered. But there was like a twenty five games there in the middle where it was it was scary hours for Paul George for a little bit. Yeah. Also, to, to the people in the chat saying D Mitch, he's not going to reach the amount of games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. D Mitch was a lock for second team for me until I realized he only played sixty three games. Same, same. I agree. I was, I was I put him on the second team also. Because the certain stint that he had was fucking special. So I then dumped him down to the third team. But then obviously checked the games played. Didn't make it. Sorry, D. Mitch. Yeah. So yeah. So my if I had a fourth team, it would be probably be Jalen, Sabonis, Adebayo, Zion, and Tyrese Maxey, I think. Hmm. Yeah. If I had one, I would definitely put in Sabonis in there. Paul George. Jalen Brown would have to be on there as well. I might fucking throw Wemby in there because it's Whew. fucking Wemby. Kiss my ass. <laughs> and then... I'm glad uh, you said it first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll put Wemby in that bitch. I, I am shameless. There. I am shameless. And then I either pick Tyrese Maxey or maybe Paolo because respect all-star. But I might oh, yeah, pick Tyrese because yeah. I think he's genuinely better. Paolo could be 14. I'd respect that. Yeah. But all right. Uh, before we, Now we have all defensive teams, which is also another very difficult one to talk about the best defenders in the league. You only get two teams. It's hard to pick just 10 guys. Before we get to that, let me read out some donations. Shout out to Shane Taylor for donating $3.68. I love a good specific amount. <laughs> said, uh, I love listening to the podcast at work. Always excited when a new episode drops. Thank guys. Appreciate you. Shout out to you, bro. Appreciate Shout you. out to J-Dub, J-Dubs for tipping $1. I know you guys don't follow college that much, but the Kentucky head coach just left and Cousins suggested Rondo as coach. My question, if you were playing for Rondo's Kentucky, how long does it take for you to punch or be punched by Coach Rondo? <laughs> <laughs> be, punched, I, be punched, it would be much more likely, and it yeah. would happen within the first two weeks. And, <laughs> and, and also, like, we know Coach Cal. You don't have to say the Kentucky coach. You, we know Coach Cal. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I know a little bit. I, I know that one of those, that's like one of, like, four names I know. Yeah. Yeah, no. Nah, Ron, Rondo would definitely be doing a whole lot of punching. He would be suspended within the first, like, 30 games of the college year. <laughs> 15. Let's say 15. Shout out to Momo for tipping $4.50. Who do you guys think the Warriors should have drafted in 2021 when they had the second pick? Tyrese Halliburton. Shout out to LaMelo Ball. Yeah, in, in the moment it was LaMelo. Looking back, Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, <laughs> white version of Mo tip $3. <laughs> White, white version, version of, of Mo. <laughs> what does he even look like? <laughs> white, the white version, version of you, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. On to all defense. Donovan, you start this time. You went last last time. Let's let you get yeah. your... Who was on the first team? We are going Rudy Gobert, Locke. Naturally. Uh, Bam Adebayo. Mm-hmm. Anthony Davis. Mm-hmm. Victor Wimbanyama. Ooh. And valid. Herb Jones. Herb Jones, love it. Mm. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, that is the exact same five I have. Wow. <laughs> Let's go. Yep. Let's go. I had to give it to Wemby. Some people might be like, oh, it's too soon. The defense sucks. Blah, 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 blah. I agree. Their team defense is horrible. Have you seen the numbers when he's not playing? They are like 12 points or 100 possessions better with him on the court. They are absolutely ridiculously horrendous when he doesn't play. So, like, yeah, the team's defense overall isn't good when he plays. But it's even worse when he sits, so I don't necessarily blame him. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. They're counting out no garbage time that's not accounted for. Minus 10.1 defensively when he plays. That is a ridiculous spread for a defender. That's like what Jokic does on offense. That's absurd. Yeah, that and, that's that. why, and that's why he's not DPOY, right? Because D- DPOY is like best defender, best team, all that stuff. Like what makes your defense go? The the all defensive teams, I feel like, and even, even like the all NBA, you can kind of get away with, this guy's really good on offense, right? Kind of met on on defense, but his 
he's kind of, he's powering his team or his team. Like you kind of need a little bit of that team success. When we get to all defense, there's so much that goes into stopping somebody from from getting to you know to the spot to score and so many moving parts. And somebody may do their somebody may miss their assignment on the other side of the floor, and now somebody's scoring. So you can have a little bit more leeway with is this defense good? Is it not? What is it? Uh, what are like the on off numbers? And with Wemby, guys, we look up every every week, and he's having a five block game. Like he's <laughs> he's ridiculous. He's crazy. Yeah, that's fair. I could agree with that. Um, my first team looks a little different from you guys. So first, I have Derek White. No, no qualms over that. One sure, of the best sure, guard White. defenders in the entire NBA. Of course, Herb Jones should be universal on every single human being's first defense ballot. Obviously, Jalen Suggs, he's a okay. fucking hound, and one of the main reasons why. Go on guard heavy. Not one of the main reasons why. Yeah, Facts. I'm going a little bit. I'm going. I'm going guard guard. Um, special defender. He wreaks havoc everywhere. He plays defense as if he hit like a fresh line of cocaine on the sideline. He's just that like sporadic <laughs> and insane. You just don't know what the fuck is going to happen next. That's Jalen Suggs for you. Next, I have Anthony Davis, and then Rudy Gobert. So you put Bam all. NBA, but not first team all defense. Yeah, not first team all defense. Interesting. Just because I want, I wanted to give him more, give more so sign to guys like Suggs. I didn't. I could have had Bam over Derek White just because Derek White, everyone knows who that is. But I wanted to give notoriety to, to guys like Suggs and shit like that. Fair enough. Yeah, I respect it. Those these guys will be on my team too. I just went towards the bigs in the first team just because they're you know typically the most valuable defenders. But yeah. yeah, I fully respect it. I'm glad we all had Herb Jones. Herb Jones. Somebody said no herb is wild. My man, you cannot read. Herb Jones on every single Yummy! <laughs> <laughs> He is the best perimeter defender in the NBA. I feel like I am watching a defensive alien. You know, I feel like I'm watching perimeter Victor Mumia. I'm gonna watch him play. The length he has, the ability to maximize that length and make it be productive as a playmaker defensively, it's utterly ridiculous. Yeah, I agree. That's very fair. Can I go ahead and uh, spin it back and give you guys my second team? Of course. But go ahead. Someone's asking about Jonathan of, Isaac. I didn't put him. He's been one of the best five defenders in the league. One, he's not going to put 65 games, I don't think. Two, uh, he plays 15 minutes a game. Like, yeah. It's hard to have that much value. But uh, pass, minute serious? for minute, he's, he's up there. He was number one on my list. Oh, my God. He was he was supposed to be my first pick. He didn't play 65. Let me check. Uh, I'd be sure. No, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he's, gonna, he's not going to make it. He's not. No, he's at 54 it. games right now. Yeah, so he's cooked. Yeah. He was on my list. God damn it. So I'm going to have to right. find the sub room later. But <laughs> regards to the fact, Alex Caruso, you deserve to be on this list. You are an absolute hound over there. Uh, in De- I said in Detroit, in Chicago. Uh, of course, I have Bam Adebayo. Wemby's in that list. Um, and Chet Holmgren is also, also makes an appearance oh. as well. Easily one of the Good. more imp- impactful defenders on all areas and ends of the basketball court. You know? So he deserved to be on the list. And then last minute, can I think of another player who I can sub in for someone like Jonathan Isaac? All right, let, let us let us go and we'll see. And we'll see if I'll we agree around. with with our picks. I'll go next. So on my second team, I have Alex Caruso, I have mm. Derek White, I have Jalen Suggs, I have Jaden McDaniels, and I have Jared Allen. Nice. Donovan. Donovan, You're Donovan, lying. Donovan. You're lying. We once again have the same five players on both of us. Wow. We're locked in. We're locked in. <laughs> the same Wait, exact that, five. We're locked in. That's crazy. So you, oh, fuck, are you kidding me? Draymond Green doesn't meet the requirements. Damn it. Draymond, no. shit. I forgot no. about the whole Rudy Gobert no. instance, bro, because he would have been the next hey, up which, on that goddamn list. You, you forgot about the Rudy incident. You forgot about the Nurkic incident. <laughs> which one is crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, bro, oh, that's man. a tragedy. Just put Jared yeah. Allen and call it a day. Yeah, yeah. I love you. I love that you guys put Jared Allen on that list. He deserves that. A lot of people don't under, don't really understand and contextualize how impactful he is on that end. The Cleveland Cavaliers have so much fucked up things going on within their basketball with on, on the basketball court, but Jared Allen is not one of them. I low key should I have put Chet over Jared Allen? Yeah, I was, I was, sure. I was thinking that. Listen, Chet, if you want to do that, go ahead. Jared Allen is just like. The whole, like, Cleveland, at least, like, last year and coming into this year, like, their defense was based off of having Mobley and Allen and just being, like, these 
super imposing Twin Towers. And the fact that they were able to lose Evan Mobley and Jared Allen was like, no, nah, like I'll, I'll hold it down. Like we're, and yeah. we're just going to vault right back up to being one of the three best defenses in the, in the league. They've slipped a little bit since then. Right now they are Seven. the seventh best, best defense. But when it was just him, when it was just Jared Allen and Donovan Mitchell, the defense went all the way back up, and it was because Jared Allen was holding it, it down. And I think that for that stretch of the, of the year, he 100% deserves to be on one of these lists. Yep, that's exactly why I did it, too. I wanted to put OG on Obi. Obviously, didn't play enough games. Yeah. If he played a full year for the New York Knicks and the way he was playing, Ooh. first team lock. He would have been, been DPOI level. He would have been yeah. ridiculous. Oh, we're, we're like 12 points better with OG uh, on, on the floor on defense. It's crazy. <laughs> He's a goon. Uh, but yeah, I, I low key feel Chet might be a better Chet versus Jared Allen's hard. Like Chet deserves it. He really transformed it's, that team defensively. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're different type of defenders too, and I just think Chet, the versatility on that, and not to say that like Jared Jared Allen has limitations defensively. I just think that Chet has better footwork and is allowed to do a little bit more at times than someone like Jared Allen. For what it's worth. The Cavs and the Thunder have the exact same defensive rating. <laughs> mm, that's hilarious. Ah, okay. Oh. I'm going, so who's your fifth mo? Are you going with Allen Chris or Dunn. McDaniels? Fuck huh? that. I'm going with Chris Dunn. Chris Dunn? Yeah, Chris Dunn is a fucking hound on the defensive end, bro. Okay. Played 66 games. I'm looking at it right now, and he's just one of those players. He's, where he's you sorted by games run. played. He he sorted he sorted the players by game no. played. It was like, all right, who got the sixty five? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm tired of get, I'm tired of me getting sold by games played, and he just made it. Shout out to yeah. you, Chris Dunn. But genuinely speaking, like he's one of those players to where like if you switch on him, you're like, damn, fuck, because he's gonna <laughs> get his hands all over you, pause, and literally not give you an inch of space to breathe, and. Lengthy, long, lengthy guard, and also stout. He has versatility on that end, can guard one through three, even at times a lot of fours. But you know what fours look like nowadays? Still very impressive. He wreaks havoc on that end. So Shout out to Chris Dunn. Dunn. I, I kind of forgot about him, but he's definitely up there. I'm glad. Plays he's another guy that, that like Dante Exum. I'm glad to see he's had a career resurrection and found a role for himself. Because I, I, I honestly, I completely forgot about him in all defensive talks. I haven't thought about the Jazz in quite a while. I agree. Who thinks about right. the Jazz these days? Yeah, listen, they, they don't want you to think about them. They're fucking money laundering to get a high pick, like always. <laughs> Somebody's saying Westbrook is definitely an upper mention as well. I guess. Yeah, right, buddy. No one's <laughs> mentioning Westbrook. And I don't even think he played enough games, brother. Yeah, it's, it's been cool what he's done for the team. He's definitely had a role, and obviously his presence was missed. There's a lot of guys you'd get to before him that are a lot more impactful overall, not just their team context. That Westbrook wouldn't be like one of my upper mentions, but I respect the shout out. Oh no, Westbrook has made it. He's played 66 games. Never mind. I was really wrong. <laughs> yeah, I respect the shout out. But n- sure. not on my all defensive teams. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Wait, all so right. There's like, four, there's like 14 games going on. After this, we should go through the, through the scores real quick, see what's going on. All right, y'all. Let's check in on right? these NBA games because that is all of our NBA awards. So we're done with that. Sure. I say we check in on these games and we get to some of your hot takes. Everybody's favorite thing of the stream. You know, we got to do it before we get out of here. So I'm going to pull up these stats, and y'all better start spamming your hot takes because I'm going to look at them. Yep, we're going to be grabbing a bunch of them right now. While you're fucking spamming the comment section, y'all, the live chat, also spam the like button. We're at 628 <laughs> likes, 629 likes. And it's a damn shame because we have almost 900 people in here. Talking to you, Crown Eater, right now. Fix that. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Fix it. So we got... The Hawks and the Heat in a barn burner tie game with 16 seconds left. Don't give a fuck about that outcome, but shout out Jimmy and DeJounte Murray going crazy. DeJounte has a triple-double. Wemby is beating the Grizzlies, as expected. Kings are beating the Thunder. Interesting. Keon Ellis is 23 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists. Keon Ellis, let's go, man. Shout out to you. (laughs) They're they're, they're giving that. They gave up. The Thunder are going to come back. (laughs) <laughs> Rockets are being the magic. Listen, the Rockets are going to fight like hell when they're eliminated. They they are a team that's instilled with hard work in them. I may is going to have them trying to the last day of the season. Houston, yeah, thank you for doing that. I need that so badly. I need it so badly so that the Knicks can get to two. How is Jalen Green doing? Let's see. He's doing man right now. Because he's has fourteen had a, points. Had a rough five games since he was crowned the next superstar. Yeah, six for thirteen from the field. Oof. Told y'all. 
Let's 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 pump the Oh break. my goodness. He does this every year. Knicks are beating the Bulls. Nuggets are beating the Jazz. Womp womp. Okay. Not that many interesting games on right now. What was the ones that ended? The Bucks beat the Celtics. They were Pat- led by a hey. twenty point Patrick yeah. Beverly game. This is hilarious because Pat Bev was put in the starting lineup today, and immediately everyone was like, "Huh? That's the move? Benching Malik Beasley, your best shooter for Patrick Beverly? I hey, guess so. the results don't lie. Immediate success followed. <laughs> oh my Let's goodness, bro! Game, thirty six minutes, twelve points. This is a, such an even, even point distribution for one game. This is very 20, 2015, 2016 Hawks like. Yeah. All right, let me read. I'm, we're about to get the hot takes now, y'all. I see y'all spamming it up. Let me read the donations real quick. Shout out to First Sir, who tipped $5. Uh, welcome to the DMV, Mo. Come out to Hoop at Quincy Park in Arlington sometime. Quincy Park in Arlington. All right. There you go. Say less. I'll see you soon, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Louis King for tipping $1. Appreciate you. Shout out to Josh22 Alien for tipping $3. A white version of Mo tipped another $5.78. We appreciate you. Uh, Shane Taylor, t- Shane Taylor tipped th- uh, $3.68. Appreciate all y'all. Let's get these hot takes. Y'all are spamming it up. Let me read these because you guys are going berserk. Hot take, the 2017 Warriors will smoke the 96 Bulls any day. I think we've discussed this at length. I agree. I don't know if smoke is the word, but I think they'd win. Greatest team of all time, and I want to say it's kind of not close. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. There's, there's just too much offensive firepower. Well, this is an interesting one. Uh, Curry should have six rings comments. Hot take, Jokic is the second best shooting big of all time after Dirk. Best shooting big? Yeah. That's... Better shooting big than Cat? Yeah. I mean, you think about being able to do it self-created in crunch time against high-level defenses in a playoff setting, yeah. the versatility of shot diet. He has a midi. He has those, like, what are essentially floaters. Obviously, he's a great three-point shooter when it comes down to it and he wants to take them. I, I kind of rock with this. He's an elite shooter in the same way Larry Bird is, where it's not, like, heavy three-point volume, but his versatility of being able to get your shot off in any place. I see that. Uh, so, what, so what would the short list be? It would be Jokic. It would be Cat. I don't playing? know. In terms of, like, something I'll say is, like, I think Cat is a better shooting big still because, I mean, just look at the percentages and also look at, like, free throws and shit like that. Cat shooting, like, 87% from the line this year and Jokic just shooting, like, 82. I don't think he's ever shot better than the line any year in his career. When it comes to shooting, just straight up using off of that metric, I would say no. For sure, no. The only thing that Cat has, I mean, Cat obviously is a better three-point shooter, higher volume will like take it coming off a screen and stuff, which is a big skill gap to have at a center position. But I don't know. Totality of shooting profile, I don't know. It's it's pretty close. I think I'll I'll lean towards Cat. Yeah. I think I might take uh actually no. I'll I'll give Yoke just the the nod. Just because I do I do think that like being able to create a shot for yourself is very, very important to that's like, fair. Being what, being like the best shooter, and like Dirk had that obviously, Jokic can can get to that. And if he wanted to, if if yeah, if he wanted to, he could take as many threes as Cat. But he's you know setting everybody else up, initiating the offense, facilitating stuff like that. So, and we, we you know we've seen when Jokic decides, hey, I'm just gonna score tonight. He'll do whatever he wants. Mm. So okay, I, okay. I'll take Jokic. Hot take: Swap T Mac for Kobe, and the Lakers still three P in the early two thousands. No. no, no, sir. Since when was T Mac playing that type of defense that Kobe used to play? What that's something that like did, did he? Do people just not recognize that he was? I don't want to say he offensively was just as talented on the defensive end, but he was one of the best defenders at his position, considering the output that he gave offensively too. Constant hell on both ends. Yeah, yeah. If we're if we're talking early, early Kobe. Like the the defense between him and T Mac is just not there. Like. I guess from, it's not there from T Max perspective. So yeah, they're not they're not winning the same. Okay. Hot take: Timberwolves can still go to the NBA Finals. Okay, so I'm assuming this is without Cat. I don't think that this is it because they just if they don't have Cat, they don't have enough offense, and that's just too much pressure to put on Ant to score an efficient 27, 28, even like 30 something points every single night, make every single big shot, make every single right decision down the stretch. Like you are asking him to be Jokic if that's the the case. And he's just clearly not that. They are not going to do it if Cat is not in the building. 
Mm. Got a fun hot take over here. Someone says Curry and John Morant both have top ten best highlight reels of all time. John Morant, well, some of the best highlight reels. John Morant's kind of too early. I mean, it's already hella impressive. Half, Curry, of, for John sure, Morant, half of John Morant's highlights are missed dunks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen. So let's obviously, if we don't hold John Morant's like youth against him, let's say it's like the best three minute highlight reel, so you don't hold on like longevity. I think it's fair. Mm. So is Ja a top ten most exciting player in NBA history? Low key, it's not that crazy. Sure. Five right now would be Steph, Jordan, LeBron, Kobe, Vince. Uh, Vince and Ja is a conversation. I mean, Vince is literally jumping over people. Yeah, I would put Kyrie in that list over Vince personally. Okay, uh, Vince so is you, up there too. Can, Vince is up there. You, you can yeah. take Kyrie. You, you can take Vince. Uh, how do this we feel is the about Jaws? In this is where Jaws at. I think he's with how, how do we how do we feel about Shaq versus Jaw? No, like I'm not putting Shaq up there. I'm not putting Shaq. Up, I'm not putting Shaq up there alongside Jaw. Jaws Jaws size and speed with those hops makes his highlight reel and like excitingness like really high. Like even yeah. though like Vince is a better jumper, obviously the the speed see, and agileness makes it pretty close. When you see Shaq's Highlight reel is just straight up like terrifying. It's like, oh my god, how do you stop that? It's not like, wow, bro. I'm okay, so, so inspired. Question. I want to replicate that. It's like, no. So, so question: Ja Morant, would you take Ja Morant's highlight tape in the NBA or Zion's highlight tape from his one year at Duke? Oh, oh Duke Zion was special, man. Shit, that's, 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 a, that's one of the craziest highlight tapes ever. Yeah. Ah, I, I guess Duke's. I don't. Ja has some dunks, bro. He has some plays. Yeah, the the does. block that Zion has, where he's closing out to to the shooter. Yeah, that's oh, DeAndre that's Hunter. Like a, that's, yeah, that's like a crazy block. Yeah, I, I think I think I would go Zion at Duke. And his okay. nineteen Zion was special, man. Yeah. Damn, that's, that's tough. tough. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's do two more hot takes before we get out of here. Uh. Hot, that's not it's boring. Everything's about Katie's legacy. <laughs> ben, ben Simmons slander him over it. Hot take: Curry isn't top ten. He's a one-way player. Basketball is a two-way sport. All right. So next hot take. <laughs> well, hot take: The Mavs have potential to make another 2011 type push and win the finals. Mm. 2011 type push. Not gonna I lie, think this that's, okay. a good compa- I, that's a good comparison. Low key, if he could really? beat the Celtics, that's kind of similar to beating the, the Heatles. Obviously, the Heatles are better, but like the unfuckwithable champion in the other conference that you come through and beat off the sheer willpower of your superstar, I could kind of see it. You go in, you beat the, the defending champs in the second round, it's kind of it's kind of lining up, bro. Could you and imagine you the super team? If Luca is the ring, he would oh, skyrocket. Luca is the main character. Rings, if he can have a ring this year with that type of that type of like path to get there, beating the Nuggets and the Celtics, the, the conversations would be ridiculous. I don't even know where to begin. Time, okay, he would immediately. So like, this is crazy. Okay, so like, so let's let's run let's run the exercise right now. So okay. he would be in. So he would beat in the first round Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, James Harden, and then yeah. in the second round he would beat. Jokic, Jamal Murray, and the Nuggets. Conference finals. Let's let's make some type of assumption on the other side of the, of the bracket. Oh no! They, the second uh, round, if they ended today, they would play the Timberwolves. Okay. Mm. Well, so, fuck it. Let's say the, let's say the Nuggets are the one seed. So yeah, they play yeah. Nuggets second round. In the third round, they probably play the Thunder. And then he beats Shea, Shea, J Dub, Chet, and then beats the Celtics in the. That's oh an God. all-time run. That's an all-time run. Same That's levels, like you're right. seven top ten players in one run wiped out. He he would have he would have beaten three of the top four MVP candidate vote getters. <laughs> and if he doesn't win it, and he comes back and fucking whoops all of them, yo, do I want do I want the Mavs to win the finals now? Am I, I think I'm on board? Oh my gosh, bro, that is. What if if that happened, we're going to have some really, really hard questions about Luka Doncic, man. No, we won't. They'll be easy questions. He's a guy. He's the best player in the world. It'll be easy. I'll be with it. I damn near would, would call him fucking top 15, bro. Like, he would just... If he did that, 
Good God. At the age of 25? Good God, I'll just say bro. that if he does that, I will be using the term goat trajectory often. <laughs> That'll be in my vocabulary, and I will be running it into the ground. Let's relax. Let's relax. <laughs> That's a big if. He's not going to do it. But if he does, I will be that having That changes hits. a lot. Yeah. Every, it changes everything. Oh, my but gosh, right, bro. That's the last hot take we had. We're at two hours <laughs> of the show. Perfect real quick, timing. real quick. Last one, last one. We listen, Doc Rivers. A Doc Rivers quote just came across across my timeline. Doc Rivers on the concern level with Giannis's left calf injury. And this is how he phrased it. That's a good question. Hi, but he's Giannis. I think everyone probably feels the same way as I do. We're just going. We're just going to hope for the best. What's, what's wrong with that? Seems seems very very negative. And I I, I don't it? know. Kind of. I think that's fair. I think I'm just hating on Doc Rivers. Yeah, I don't know. It's That's easy to hate on Doc Rivers. I, I, yeah. I'd be happy to shit on that too. Fuck you, Doc. That's true. We'll see y'all later. <laughs>